Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto saves fairy tale from Acnologia before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. And check out the description as well. Let's start the video. High in the sky Acnologia the black dragon of the apocalypse soared through the heavens. He had finally managed to sniff out that bastard scent after nearly a century where Zeref escaped his clutches. He would finally get his revenge on the black wizard who haunted his sleep for centuries. Acnologia is mastodonic and has an entire upper body covered in black, round, scales, which, in turn, are decorated by spiraling blue markings. His lower body, specifically his chin, chest, stomach, inner tail, eyes, and arms, are gray in color and appear to be rather smooth. Acnologia's eyes are wide and beady, and his head is round and blunt with four, large, elongated plates extending backward. Acnologia's mouth is full of razor-sharp teeth, and, attached to his chin, is a protrusion that resembles an arrowhead. His large wings are feathery in appearance, akin to a bird's. The scales disappear at the end of Acnologia's tail, which, in itself, ends in a stinger-esque shape. But the growl he begun his extremely slow descent to the island below him. On the island below, a young girl named Wendy plopped down onto her seat with a sigh of relief, fighting against such a powerful foe, as Hades was extremely draining on one's power. The sound of a deep guttural growl that went across the sky made her shiver for a second as it felt like a set of claws latched onto her soul. Why did that sound so familiar to her? Meanwhile Makarov was sitting down on a small hill on his own, shivered at the sound of the growling noise. He sighed that sure was an ungodly sound he mumbled, not knowing what was bound to happen in the next half of an hour's time from now. He crossed his arms and thought just what could it be. He questioned himself. The sound of footsteps drew his attention causing the elder to turn and see Urza walk up to him where she bowed. Urza is a stunning beauty with red hair and brown eyes. She currently wears a dazzling blue dress with her long red hair tied up into a ponytail, master the ship is almost ready to depart, all we are waiting is for your word to depart from here. She stated honestly to the elderly wizard. She then hung her head also, regarding what Laxus has done I was wondering if you would allow him to return to the guild. She stated once more. Makarov gave a HMPH at that one, like hell he would do something like that. Laxus had desecrated the first precious motto of family and friendship so hell to the no. He turned away from the lovely Redeed I'm sorry my girl, but I have nothing to discuss with her about that wayward grandson of mine. Especially after everything he has pulled. He told. High in the sky Acnologia the black dragon of the apocalypse soared through the heavens. He had somehow managed to sniff out a scent he hadn't tasted after nearly a century. He would finally get his excitement fulfilled after so many years. The hunt was on once again. Acnologia is mastodonic and has an entire upper body covered in black, round, scales, which, in turn, are decorated by spiraling blue markings. His lower body, specifically his chin, chest, stomach, inner tail, eyes, and arms, are gray in color and appear to be rather smooth. Acnologia's eyes are wide and beady, and his head is round and blunt with four, large, elongated plates extending backward. Acnologia's mouth is full of razor-sharp teeth, and, attached to his chin, is a protrusion that resembles an arrowhead. His large wings are feathery in appearance, akin to a bird's. The scales disappear at the end of Acnologia's tail, which, in itself, ends in a stinger-esque shape. But the growl he began his extremely slow descent to the island below him. On the island below, a young woman of roughly 18, named Wendy, plopped down onto her seat with a sigh of relief, fighting against such a powerful foe as Hades was extremely draining on one's power. The sound of a deep guttural growl that went across the sky made her shiver for a second as it felt like a set of claws latched onto her soul. Why did that sound so familiar to her? Meanwhile Makarov was sitting down on a small hill on his own, shivered at the sound of the growling noise. He sighed that sure was an ungodly sound he mumbled, not knowing what was bound to happen in the next half of an hour's time from now. He crossed his arms and thought just what could it be. He questioned himself. The sound of footsteps drew his attention causing the elder to turn and see Urza walk up to him where she bowed. Urza is a stunning beauty with red hair and brown eyes. She currently wears a dazzling blue dress with her long red hair tied up into a ponytail, master the ship is almost ready to depart, all we are waiting is for your word to depart from here. She stated honestly to the elderly wizard. She then hung her head also, regarding what Laxus has done I was wondering if you would allow him to return to the guild. She stated once more. Makarov gave a HMPH at that one, like hell he would do something like that. Laxus had desecrated the first precious motto of family and friendship so hell to the no. He turned away from the lovely Redeed I'm sorry my girl, but I have nothing to discuss with her about that wayward grandson of mine. Especially after everything he has pulled. He told the Redeed. It wasn't that he didn't love Laxus, far from it, it was just that he hadn't earned the proper redemption as of yet. 
he crossed his arms again I will say this though, he's got quite the pair to do what he has, stepping on fairy tales holy ground while not having the emblem on him. He stated. Urza took a step but master, think about what he has done for us last night. Surely that would be more than enough to let him return. She said to the elder wizard again. Makarov shook his head unfortunately it didn't. It still won't change my mind Urza. I know of his battle against Hades, saving all of y'all from a death battle you couldn't win. He has my gratitude for that I will admit, but in the end he will not be back in the guild until I expressly allow it to happen. He told her. Urza sighed in disappointment so, your thought and position is firm is it? She questioned. However the surprise answer came from Laxus himself of course it is, it's how the guild has stayed strong for nearly a century after all. One simply can't buy their way back into the guild with a single heroic deed for those who are a part of the guild after all. The blonde started drawing Urza's attention. I was only doing what any passerby would do in that type of situation. I know that I haven't earned the right to wear the emblem once more though. He said with a sigh. He then looked to his grandfather Hey Geezer. He started drawing Makarov's attention, and even with a stern look on his face, Laxus couldn't help it and smiled oh yeah, that's the look what a classic, and it might be the last time I see it too. He stated. He started to walk away, with Urza asking him to stop, however a louder growl caused him to stop, as his eyes widened in shock. What was that? It was so unnerving it wasn't even funny right now, some water holes were being affected by the phenomena, as well as the water slightly rippled at the effects of Acnologia drawing near with each passing moment. Bilderts was holding his newfound child gently when he heard it and stiffened at the sound, immediately knowing what it was that caused him such fear. Looking up he gave a whisper oh no, this couldn't be happening he stated quietly. Anna looked up to her father w what's wrong? Is something the matter? She questioned. Still looking around he answered oh by the gods I hope not. He stated. Meanwhile where the others had gathered to relax before returning to the mainland, Lucy placed a hand on a tree, what was that? It sure was off for some reason she said. Natsu nodded in agreement at that one, and it smells off for sure. It also has this familiar yet strange odor to it. He stated in agreement. Happy perked up while we're at it, I'm reminded of something. The cat said before pulling out a fish here Lucy, maybe this'll settle your tummy. He stated. Lucy glared at the cat, that's not funny, happy. She told him. As she said this another growl shook the sky, causing Gagiel to groan will somebody please stuff that blonde stomach, I'm starting to get a headache here. He stated. Lysanda perked up well Edo Lucy had an appetite, but I don't think that appeals to her Lucy. She stated. Levy was annoyed at her not so secret boyfriend ignore him Lysanda, he's being his usual ass of himself. She stated in annoyance while Gadula looked at her and blew a kiss with a chuckle. Barahin, as usual, spoke up I sure hope we have enough food to feed that hungry beast she calls a stomach. She said. Lucy blushed in embarrassment, it's not me guys, honest. She wailed out. Bajil almost fell out of his chair at that geez, don't you know a joke when you hear it woman? He questioned her. Bray crossed his arms all jokes aside, what the hell was that noise we just heard anyways? He asked as he looked around. However he failed to notice that something was off, even Bixlow had noticed it and was currently pointing it out to Freed, which caused the two men to go wide-eyed at the sight. The sound of deep inhaling drew his attention causing him to look around some more okay seriously, it sounds like an animal going into heat, come on what the hell he stated. Freed cleared his throat that would be because of your unique type of chair you sit on he stated. Bray looked to him with a confused look my chair. He asked where he got a nod and looked down what's wrong with it. Is it squeaking or what the hell? He exclaimed jumping up in shock. Yuvia wiggled her romp at her love interest I failed to protect you so acting as your chair while being spanked should be punishment enough. Juvia told the ice make wizard as she continued to do so. Bray grew agitated I smacked you because you were being a reckless woman, how many times do I gotta say that? He questioned her. Barahin ignored the bickering duo and set a glass of water on the table beside Wendy well aside from that, is anyone else thirsty? She asked, I hope you don't get too hot now Wendy, I mean I know you've gotten stronger, but you need your energy. She stated. Wendy smiled thanks, but I'll be fine Mira. She stated honestly. She gave a smile besides you're hurt, why don't you get some rest? She stated, however Elfman had to add his two cents to this. But the grin on his face he held a thumb up that's how you do it, just like a real man. He said. After this happened, Evergreen smacked the fan she carried on her head hard, oh please tell me you didn't just do that bitch. He said to the woman. Ever growled you're damn right I did, and if I hear you say real man one more time, I'm gonna turn you into stone forever. She raged as she whacked him again and again. Elfman was croaking out cries of pain as the brown-haired woman continued to do this what's it matter to you, bitch? He questioned the fairy woman. Evergreen saw her and whacked him harder, it's driving me insane asshole. She roared at him. 
A louder growl soared across the air, causing Wendy's water to move around in the glass, drawing her attention. Why do you care? Elfman demanded. Warahin smiled I don't think the two of you should be fighting, especially with it being so close to the wedding. She said. This caused them to stop and look at her, that was a lie mirror. They exclaimed with red faces to match their embarrassment. By now Aknologia was close enough to see the island, however he was enraged at what he felt, and with a mighty roar that caused all of the members of Fairy Tail to cover their ears, he descended towards the island, still slowly, but not as slow as he was going before. Evergreen covered her ears to the best of her ability, but the roar was so loud and powerful w what is that sound? She questioned. Elfman, who was mimicking the woman groaned in pain from nearly going deaf whatever it is, it sure is manly. He stated as the roar faded away. By now Wendy had taken notice of her necklace and was doing her best to hide it, looked around for the source I don't believe it. That was the sound of a dragon's roar. She stated unsure of how or what was going on at the moment. Lysanda stood up and looked at the little girl a dragon, are you sure that was what that was? She questioned. Anthrolily nodded in agreement yeah, are you sure it wasn't the sound of thunder just now? He questioned scared. He received the answer as Acnologia gave off another roar. By now everybody was alert and were trying to gather up to leave before they met this dragon. Lucy, Natsu, Gilderts, Kana, Happy were running to the camp in hopes of fleeing the island hey is everybody okay? She asked them. Bray nodded his head yeah, did you guys hear that sound? It was unreal. He stated. Gilderts stumbled causing a few of them to walk over to him, what's the matter? Kana asked him. Gilderts glared at the sky my wounds are starting to burn there's no doubt in my mind now. He's here, that dragon is coming to the island he stated. Everybody was looking to the sky to see if they could spot the mystery dragon, but it was Pantherlily that spotted it first look up in the sky, something's coming this way. He exclaimed causing them to look up. Natsu looked in the direction the cat was pointing and felt his heart begin to race at the sight he saw. Happy flew over to him Natsu, what's the matter? However when he looked in the direction Natsu was he gave a cry of fright at what he saw. Bray felt his eyes widen in shock holy crap. He exclaimed in shock. Acnologia curled his claws and gave a roar that split the heavens, while spraying a large amount of saliva from his powerful maw. Elfman was openly gawking at the sight of the dragon that thing's frigging huge. He said taking a step back. Acnologia released another roar at them as he come down lower, making them cover their ears once again. My god it is a dragon. Bixlo gasped in astonishment. Lucy was in awe so Natsu was telling the truth about dragons being real I don't believe it. She said as a harsh wind blew. Bajil scowled you've got to be kidding me he told himself. I don't think this dragon's a friendly one guys. Wendy said scared as she looked at Acnologia. Natsu was scowling hard as he looked at Acnologia I knew it so I was right all along. They still exist. He stated. I am afraid that it's Acnologia, the black dragon of the apocalypse. You all need to get out of here while you still can. Makarov said as he stepped up to fight. Lucy looked to the elder that sounds bad she said with a gulp of fear. Bilderts growled yeah, that's him alright he stated queasy at the thought of having to fight the dragon again. What can we do against something with a name like that? Lucy asked. Instead of receiving an answer Natsu's voice called out to the dark creature oi dragon, tell me something. Where's Igni lad? Tell me Grandini and Metalikana as well. He asked the dragon. Bilderts rounded on the team, listen kid I know you want to find your father, but you need to listen to me. You can't reason with chaos. The best thing that we can do right now is try and survive the dragon's wrath if he attacks us. Don't you remember how I lost my arm as well as my leg? Hell I'm lucky I didn't lose my life that day. He told the teen. Natsu stopped speaking as he looked back to the time Gilderts had told him of his life-threatening encounter and narrowed his eyes in anger. Freed felt his heart skip a beat when he realized something was off, it was getting bigger and bigger by the moment it's coming down. He yelled out as Acnologia roared once more as he came closer to the island. Happy hid behind Natsu as he shivered in fright, I don't think that this dragon is like the ones that raised Natsu and Wendy. If anything this one seems evil. Happy yelped out. A loud thump in the ground shaking was the signal that Acnologia had landed. As the dragon did so a large gust of wind kicked up the air, forcing everybody to cover their eyes. Bilderts gave a growl you got that right. This is the most evil, vile being in the entire world bars air of the black wizard himself. He told the cat. Natsu looked to the man so how are we gonna fight this thing? He questioned Gilderts. The orange-haired man shook his head, there is no fighting this thing Natsu. This is about whether or not we can survive it. Hell I don't even think some of us will be lucky enough to do even that right now. He stated honestly. Natsu felt his eyes widen are you trying to tell me that somebody's going to die? He asked him. At the time Natsu asked his question Acnologia gave a roar and slammed a hand down on the ground shaking it again. He wanted Zaref, but instead he found a petty guild to fight. This was pathetic. 
As Aknologia did so Gildertz felt his eyes widen before he shouted come on get to the ship, now. With a wave of his only hand. However everyone stopped as they watched the dragon take a deep breath. They didn't even breath as they watched it inhale. However their bated breaths weren't to last as Aknologia gave off a roar so powerful the wind begun to literally rip the earth apart. Entire lakes were blasted away, as well as half of the island's own forest. The blast was so strong one of the cliff sides actually collapsed to the earth. As the dust settled and Aknologia calmed himself down, Natsu sat up from being thrown away, but what he saw was something he wished he hadn't, and no way there's no way, the entire forest has completely disappeared. He stated in shock. Levy was cowering behind her guildmate shivering in terror, how could such a creature be so destructive? She asked. Hana was shivering in fear it wiped out the trees with just a roar how powerful is that thing? She questioned in fright. Bilderts gave a grunt not just powerful, he's evil too. TCH he's admiring his work. He stated as he noticed Aknologia steadily flying above their heads with a smirk on his face. Well the dragon wouldn't admit it, he was kinda enjoying himself as he showed them what true terror felt like. Rolling his neck he stood up that just now was his way of getting warmed up with a greeting mixed in there. He stated as he turned around, listen up, if you want to survive, then stop wasting your time with your freaking out. Pull yourselves together and let's leave this place together. He ordered them. As he said this Aknologia gave another earth-shattering roar, causing Gilderts to roar at the kids hurry, everyone get to the ship now. We're going back to fairy tale. He yelled out. But that everybody begun to run, only Aknologia wouldn't allow it and flew down and blocked their escape route. Carla looked to her friend in fright Wendy, you know how to communicate with a dragon. Can you talk to it for us? She asked a dragon slayer. Wendy looked to her partner in fright anyone can communicate with a dragon. They have an extremely high intellect after all, but this one didn't come here to talk with us. She replied as Aknologia gave another roar frightening his daughter in the process. Aknologia slammed his hand on the ground on either side of Freed and Bixlow, causing them to stop and turn in fright. Aknologia grinned and slammed his jaw into the ground. Evergreen gave a yell of fright for her friends Freed. Bixlow, no. She yelled out worriedly. Wendy looked worried as Gray gave an exclamation about being cut off from the ship why us, why here? Answer me. She demanded the dragon. Meanwhile Zaref watched with a small frown, predators don't talk with their prey. Same as an exterminator with pests. One simply does not communicate with a lesser species on a weaker level, such as a human does with a dragon he told himself. Acnologia slammed his hand down next to Laxus. Forcing the man to jump away. As he did this he slammed his other hand down next to Gray, also forcing him to jump away as he did so. Raising his tail he swiped it across the ground dripping the trees from the ground and sends Elfman flying. Evergreen seeing this jumped up to catch him. Looking to her he smiles brightly, only to gasp in shock as Aknologia swats them down to the ground painfully. Mankind will soon learn just exactly who stands at the top of the food chain and it will ensure they open their eyes. Zaref said. On the island Levy was openly crying at the side of the blocked path before them, oh no, we're trapped. What'll we do? She begged. Natsu gave a yell as he charged forward and came to a stop as the dragon slammed its tail down into the ground, which threw the dragon slayer off his feet away from him. Natsu sat up with a fury in his eyes, asshole. He cried out. However as he said this he felt his eyes widen at the sight of the old man ripping his shirt off and prepared to fight the dragon, Jai-chan. Natsu exclaimed. Bet to the ship. The old man ordered as his body glowed with golden energy, as well as increase in size, until he stood as tall as Aknologia, here he is able to wrap his arms around the demonic dragon's neck, where he begun to struggle to hold it back. You're crazy, you can't fight that thing alone. Gray exclaimed in shock. Master, please don't play the hero. Urza cried out, the guild needs you to stay alive. Get out of here. Makarov ordered loudly. Freed groaned as he looked up to the old man, I will fight by master's side. He declared boldly. No lizard's gonna tear this guild apart. Bixlow yelled out loudly. I will stay with you till the bitter end. Evergreen stated. One by one each of Makarov's beloved family members declared their intention before Makarov couldn't stomach any more, would you brats just shut up and honor your master's final wish, get out of here now. He commanded loudly. Final wish. Mira said with tears in her eyes. That was until Natsu cried out, I am a dragon slayer wizard, this was what I was born to do so let me act Natsu gagged as he was grabbed by the scarf around his neck and dragged away by none other than Laxus. Not today kid. He said as he walked away. Laxus, let me he stopped as he saw the tears falling from his former guildmate's eyes and he allowed him to drag him off. Urza hated herself for what she was about to do but consented in the end, best of luck. She told the old man before she ran off, now let's run. She cried out as the rest of her friends followed. Makarov felt satisfied, what good children it may be hard for you, but this is for the best. 
It's times like these that teach you an important lesson for your futures. Like knowing that tears are wasteful things, nothing to trouble over. Is death caused by sadness, or is sadness caused by death? The answers are in your hearts. My dear children, you must learn, and grow, and live. He declared to himself in thought as he continued to hold the dragon menace back still. He groaned as Acnologia begun to push him back, you foul creature. He declared as Acnologia smashed his tail down into the ground, I don't know what your goal is here. But I'm not letting you get any further. I won't let you harm my children. Acnologia had a mad gleam in his eyes as he stood up onto his hind legs and begun to physically push the giant human back as he held Acnologia by his shoulders in an attempt to hold him off for just a little longer. Makarov allowed bellow as he stumbled and fell onto his back which in turn caused Acnologia to release his almighty roar as he slammed his hand down onto the giant and pinned it to the ground. However, rather than simply submit with fear in his eyes, Makarov smiled as he begun to laugh to himself, this is what a father does for his family. I have no regrets, I can die a happy man. He told himself as he allowed his head to fall to the ground as he shut his eyes. However, what Makarov didn't expect was for Natsu to go running by which caused him to open his eyes in surprise as he watched Natsu dodge a tail swipe from the Black Dragon of Apocalypse before he jumped up onto the dragon's tail, before leaping onto its arm, we're not leaving without Gramps, you hear me. Natsu yelled out. Natsu? Aknologia released a loud roar as he picked his arm up off Makarov's body, with a struggling Natsu holding onto his arm. With a single stroke, he smashed Makarov's gigantic body away, where he crashed into the cliff in a cloud of smoke and dust, forcing him to revert back to normal, as he coughed in pain. As he looked up he also noticed a familiar Ritid standing in front of him and felt his eyes widen, Urza, you too? He asked in pain. I was down with the plan to evacuate. A voice said drawing Makarov's attention to Laxus, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who'd let the old guy take the fall. He said as he looked to his grandfather, but not your guild. He said with a smile. Now attack. Urza commanded the rest of her friends as she jumped forward with determination. The youngest generation of fairy tale were now battling against the dragon king of apocalypse in order to protect their master, in order to protect their own, as a family. Bringing out everything that was left inside them, fairy tale team attacked Acnologia, bringing down wave after wave of magic on its gigantic body. You damn stupid bunch of kids. Tears swelled up at the corners of Makarov's eyes, he couldn't believe it, and he didn't know what to say just watched on while sobbing quietly. Laxus gave a loud yell as he called upon all his power, alright you guys, let's hit this overgrown lizard with everything we've got. If you let loose on him and I blast him with a million watts of lightning, he'll learn to never mess with fairy tale again. He called out. Laxus. The Thunder Legion said with grins. Laxus and. Wendy said in awe of his power as Gaju let out a chuckle. On Acnologia's arm, Natsu heard the crackling electricity before he saw the glow of the lightning wizard, Laxus. He asked. You better get out of the way Natsu, cause here it comes. Laxus told him. Hold on just a second man. Natsu responded. No, do it now Laxus. Urza cried out. I haven't moved yet. Natsu cried out in panic. However, Laxus knew that if they wanted to teach this monster a lesson he needed to act fast, and so he listened to Urza's call as he let a yell of, raging bolt out, as he hurled as much lightning out from his body as possible, and allowed it to race towards the dragon. Soon after, all the other members of Fairy Tail added their own form of magic into the attack, until it was one large spiraling beam of magic energy, as it raced towards Acnologia with high speeds. Natsu's friend Happy quickly used his on magic to grab Natsu before he was obliterated by the attack that quickly enveloped Acnologia in a dome of power. A little not too far away from the battle, a young girl, with long, wavy, yellow blonde hair that reached down to her feet with a single lock pointing upwards, large green eyes that appeared to have nowhere eyes, peachy skin and a slight childlike build. She was wearing a frilly pink layered robe with a red ribbon tied in a bow around her neck. Around the chest were three blue diamond patterns with two blue triangles above. Each series of these was outlined in a hot pink. She wore wing-like adornments around her ears and small hoop earrings and going barefoot. She looked at them with a soft smile, yet her eyes were in the sad manner. The next generation of fairy tale fighting against the strongest dragon, anyone who knew about the strength of the Dragon King could see that fairy tale was fighting in vain as their attacks did no damage to the black dragon. She closed her eyes and put her hands together, as if in prayer. Laxus felt his eyes widen in shock as the dragon remained unaffected by the multitude of attacks it had been hit with, seriously, we totally unloaded on this bastard, and he's still smiling. He asked himself before he called out, alright, let's see what you dragon slayers can do. He yelled out as the cats picked up their own partner and flew above Acnologia, you hear me Natsu. Bellowed out the muscular man. Let's show this overgrown lizard what fairy tale is really capable of. Gadjul roared. Right. The others agreed. 
they each drew back their heads and began to unleash unholy hell on the dragon Tetsurik no Hoko, Iron Dragon's roar, Gajul called out. Henrik no Hoko, Sky Dragon's roar, Wendy yelled out. Eric no Hoko, Fire Dragon's roar, Natsu roared. The attacks all combine and explodes. It not only pushed the dragon back in a storm of elemental magic, it sent the dark dragon crashing into the waters in a large explosion of power. Landing on the ground the group of dragon slayers waited to see if they had any luck in bringing down the dark dragon. Did we get him, did it work? Natsu asked. Of course not. Gildert said as he spoke up. What do you mean? Gray asked him. He's not even using half as much power as the time he fought me, he's playing with us. He told the ice wizard as the ground shuddered before it broke apart as Acnologia rose to the sky once again. Ruor the black dragon roared loudly as he came up, knocking the members of Fairy Tail away, as if they were mere flies. The dragon kings looked down on his quarry. Iwe. Natsu cried, falling on top of Lucy's back. Is everyone alright? Urza asked loudly as she got up from the ground. None of our attacks are working at all, Elfman said through gritted teeth, his sister standing beside him, forced to deactivate her Satan soul form. His power's unbelievable. Gajil remarked. We gave it everything we had. Wendy cried, three dragon slayers all at the same time. She said, our whole guild went against him and it still wasn't enough. The girl whined out. This shouldn't happen. I'm supposed to be a freaking dragon slayer, so why couldn't I beat him? Natsu growled out to himself. What do you think he'll do now? Pantherly asked. Maybe he'll decide to just go back home. Happy suggested in fear as he shivered at the dragon above them. However, that prayer wasn't answered as Acnologia begun to inhale deeply. It's a breath attack. Gajil shouted when he saw energy began to swirl around Acnologia's mouth. Is it planning on blasting the whole island away? Kana asked in shock. No way. He's that strong. Everyone who can use defensive magic put the power you've got into it, now. Urza ordered, pointing back to her group. There's not enough time to draw the seals. Freed muttered. There's plenty of defensive magic that does not require writing symbol or seals. Levy said hurriedly, sweats pouring down her forehead. By now anyone could feel the vast amount of magic Acnologia was emitting, even from here. Every nefficus all your magical energy on Freed and Levy. Lysanna shouted. Let's hold hands. Marahin Strauss said and offered her hands to the nearest person, her brother as he took it. XXX unknown location volcanoes erupted with unrelenting force, lava flowed like rivers as magma spewed from the surrounding mountains. A gigantic clawed hand slammed down into the molten wreck, unfazed by the heat being given off. A large tail swiped through the air as the sight passed over a pair of reptilian wings that burned with golden flames. A scarred face could be seen growling, sharp teeth that could rip a human apart in a single bite, clenched in excitement, as the eyes of the beast revealed themselves as a set of slit sapphires, and the animal, now clearly seen as a dragon, spoke up for the first time, so the time has come at last. XXX Tenru Natsu had suddenly collapsed, causing his friends to gather around him in worry, and as he ignored them a voice that he knew all too well spoke from deep in his mind, Natsu, it's been too long my boy. Natsu suddenly perked up, excitement and hope filled his chest, Igneal. He asked. There is much to do, and before we can discuss what we need in depth I have to come and relive your burden. The dragon said. Natsu looked around desperately, Igneal, how can I hear your voice? He asked. The golden glow surrounded Natsu before the reptilian voice belonging to Igneal spoke clearly for all to hear him, fear not, I will deal with Acnologia. He stated simply. The glow grows to encompass Natsu's entire body as he groans in pain. Lucy's eyes widen in shock. What was going on? What was happening to Naruto, and what was that glow surrounding his body? Natsu gripped his stomach as a rush of memories entered his mind. Natsu was six when he managed to perfect his first dragon slayer technique. He and Igneal celebrated by going on a hunt together and having a fun time. The next was when he and Igneal were going over some notes on literature and culture, where Natsu was smiling at the idea of learning. A new memory flashed by his mind where he and Igneal were just taking a day to relax and enjoy a day free of training. And then the final memory was the day he realized Igneal had left him without any warning. With one final shout a pillar of light shot up from Natsu's body where it began to take shape. Lucy was thrown back by a small shockwave of power where she cried out in pain. Juvia crouched over as she tried not to fall back. Levy fell on her butt and winced as the winds grew stronger and stronger. Gajil was openly gaping at what he was watching, and he was honestly confused at what he was seeing. Igneal's sorrow-filled voice spoke gently, I'm sorry son, but I never did leave you. Igneal said to him as he finally began to take form. To say Igneal was large would be to try and tell the waves at a beach not to crash. Igneal was absolutely humongous. The first thing they could all see clearly was a pair of dark red arms reform out of the air. Next was the long winding tail that gave him incredible balance when he flew. 
The next thing to materialize was the dragon's broad chest and neck, showing that he was covered in dark red scales. After that was the dragon's powerful wings that gave him the ability to fly around. Finally he was free to the world around him. Natsu looked up to his father in surprise as his father spoke once more, in fact I've been closer than you ever could have guessed. The fire dragon boldly told his son. Lucy was looking at Igniel in shock. So this was Natsu's father. Levi had felt her jaw drop, but she just couldn't pick it up. Juvia was speechless at the sight before her, as she never would have guessed that this dragon was on their side. Agile couldn't form words as he too was in shock at what he had just witnessed happen. A dragon had just come out of a human's body like a everyday thing was happening. The wind surrounding them died down as Igniel looked down at his son, please trust that all will be explained in time. He said to him as he then looked up to the accursed dragon known as Acnologia. The fire dragon growled right now I must wipe the blight of Acnologia from this world. Igniel said as he charged the black dragon of the apocalypse. Acnologia charges a breath attack to rid the world of these pests. Today the last of the dragons would die, and nothing could stop him now. Just as Acnologia began to release his powerful breath attack, a dragon similar to Acnologia came out of nowhere and rams into Acnologia, causing the magic to shoot across the sky lighting up the heavens. The members of the fairy tale guild covered their eyes from the brightness, while the new dragon roared while he tried to keep Acnologia's head aimed away from the people below them. Igniel roars out live, Natsu. He tells his son as Acnologia reels back from the unseen enemy that managed to push his attack off course. Acnologia shakes his head in anger at the sight before him a dragon dare challenges him, him, the king of Dragonsto a fight. Rarg Igniel roars at Acnologia in challenge. Ruayar Acnologia roars in return as the two dragons then try to slam each other out of the way, creating massive blasts of air that cause the group of wizards' hair to blow away. The wide-eyed Juvia looks at the spectacle in shock I'm dreaming I have to be. She says. Igniel rams his head down on Acnologia as the two start to dance about in the air in a battle of death. The two dragons then spin around and headbutt each other before flying around a bit more. Natsu had tears in his eyes. He never thought he would see him again. He was crying for the first time in nearly 10 years since he had heard himself falling down the volcano and scraping his knee. Tears flowing freely he spoke your back he said crying, you came back. Alright, with that said and done, please enjoy chapter 2. Natsu couldn't believe his eyes. His father had been sealed inside of him for the past 7, technically 14, years. Lucy gulped as she looked at Igniel, that's him the king of the dragons. She said quietly, although the dragon slayer heard her clearly. Hell Natsu was still trying to comprehend what was going on. Just why did his father decide to reveal himself now instead of seven years ago when he had left him? Although Natsu was still recovering they had heard her speak about the fire dragon king. It was at this time Acnologia made his move and charged at Igniel. The fire dragon seeing this drew back and charged at Acnologia with high speeds where they met in a powerful headbutt. Growling at their enemy the two dragons then proceeded to trade blows while roaring at each other in fury. Natsu was shaking with frustration. He then looked at his father, I can't believe it he said in shock. Yuvia looked at the ongoing battle with wide eyes, Igniel was inside him. How? Is that possible? She asked, watching the fight. Levi shrugged her shoulders and looked to Gagiel, maybe, do you have one? She asked the two dragon slayers. Agile took a deep breath of air, don't really know, never thought about it. He said. So you decided to ally yourself with mere humans. That's pathetic, but I wouldn't expect any less from a lowlife such as yourself, Igniel. Acnologia said to the Dragon King. Don't forget, you were once a human. Besides, I'd rather ally myself to a species that isn't hell-bent on the destruction of the world than a fascist regime. Igniel replied as he flared his wings out to make himself look bigger. Acnologia rammed his body into the Red Dragon and pushed him back. Igniel brought both his hands up and clasped them together and brought them down as hard as he could upon the dark dragon's back driving him down towards the ground. Acnologia grunted and brought his tail up and smacked Igniel across the face, causing the dragon to fly back from him. Opening his wings widely Acnologia took to the heavens above. Igniel himself followed to the skies quickly after. Igniel quickly passes the dark dragon and smacks him back in the face with his tail. Acnologia easily shrugs the strike off and sweeps his claws at the red dragon. Igniel leans his head to the left, effectively dodging the strike before Acnologia turns back to strike once again. Igniel was quicker and threw a hard left hook that forced Acnologia to turn away from Igniel. Growling Acnologia sweeps his hand back trying to hurt Igniel. Once again Igniel leans out of the way and head butts Acnologia forcing the black dragon to fall back. Shaking the cobwebs from his head Acnologia turns around and charges Igniel, but the dragon king wouldn't have that. Lucy gulped, we're going to be okay, aren't we? She asked. At this time the entire guild was standing next to each other watching the fight between the two dragons. Agile shrugged, to be honest I'm not sure. 
He said before looking at Natsu, what's going on Salamander? I mean is that really Igneal? What was all that stuff about being inside you? He asked. The fire dragon slayer growled in frustration, I have no idea. He left, and I searched for so long. He said clenching his fists. Yuvia put a hand on the white-haired teen's shoulder, Natsu-san. She said in worry. The man removed her hand and stepped forward looking down with a growl. He then raised his foot and slammed it on the growl summoning his magic. He blasted off on thrusters made of flame and flew at the two dragons, what the hell, dad. We've gotta talk now. He roared at his father. What's he doing? Urza exclaimed in shock as she watched Natsu shoot off into the sky. Oh yeah. Happy exclaims excitedly. Natsu. Several of the guild members cry out in shock. Big Neil looked at the salmon-haired teen in shock as he flew at him while Natsu's eyes narrowed, hrgh he growled loudly at the dragon. Big Neil narrowed his eyes, Natsu, you fool, I told you we'd talk later. The dragon growled at the dragon slayer as Natsu latched onto his wings. Natsu shook his head, tell me now. Would you disappear and leave me? Oh and if you were inside me why didn't you say something? He demanded. Igneal snorted at the dragon slayer. Natsu growled again, do Wendy and Gajul have dragons inside them too? And what happened that day, on July 7th the day you left me? He demanded from his father. When his father didn't answer Natsu grew angry, come on, you owe me. He roared out. Aknaloja charged, forcing Igneal to fly higher while dislodging Natsu from his wing, enough. Igneal said in frustration as he caught Natsu in his hand. Lucy's eyes widened, Natsu. She shouted out. Yuvia sighed in relief, that was close. She said. Bajil growled quit distracting him. He yelled. Wendy cried out in shock, don't space out Igneal san When she saw the Dragon King dodge out of the way. When Natsu looked down he had an eye close up of Aknaloja charging him and his father. Igneal, seeing how close the Black Dragon was, drew his head back filling it with an unquenchable fire. Care you know HOKO the dragon roars out and spits forward a sea of raging fire from his mouth that surrounds the black dragon in the form of an orb of fire that nearly set the sky aflame. The sheer heat given off by the flame could be felt throughout the sea as the dragon king unleashed his first century old rage on his enemy. The sheer heat of this attack was like nothing they had ever experienced. B.A. Lucy groaned. I burns. Levy said as Gadula moved in front of her. Stay behind me. He said, trying to protect her from the heat waves that attacked them. I am boiling. Juvia said as she covered her face while at the same time Igneal gave another roar, more of his flames washing over his black skilled adversary and swallowing him in a ball of fire to the point he was unable to move. Igneal's a manly dragon elfman exclaimed. The this heat is unlike anything I've ever felt. Lysanna said. We're in serious trouble here. Mira cried out as she covered her face to stave off the sheer heat from Igneal's attack. This is bad. Like really really bad. Happy said in shock as he looked at the dragon's attack on his enemies. It feels like I'm in an oven and we're standing way over here. Pantalili said as he wiped the sweat from his forehead. It's so hot. Carla cried out as she began to sweat heavily while Igni lonely continued to release hellfire down on the enemy dragons, the fire dragon king's roar, once again filling the air as he relentlessly assaulted his enemy. Anna and her friends looked at the dragon's assault with wide eyes as well, that's unbelievable. It's almost as if the sun is crashing down from the sky. Kana said. It's over don't you think? Evergreen asked. I don't know, but that dragon's definitely sound like he's in pain. Pixlow said. Breed gawked at this, if that dragon can't take that kind of heat, then nobody can. He said as he watched the fire dragon king release his wrath upon his enemy. Makarov could only look at this in astonishment, Gildertz grunted as he took a step back, I think we better hide. He thought aloud. Urza shook her head, I don't think that's going to help us. She said. Aknaloja, enveloped by the incredible flames growls in anger before he cries out in shock as he is hurled to the earth, crashing into the sea as the fire dragon's own powerful breath attack detonates and expands to the point it reaches high into the skies, the ball of flame shoving its own creator higher into the sky due to the sheer amount of power unleashed. Forcing the ball of flame to expand to the point it was soon three times its original size where it easily dwarfed the entire island, causing them to look on in awe while they cratered the ground and split the sea apart. Amazing. Urza said. It's the fire dragon's roar happy said quietly. Oh wow that fireball's huge. Levy said with wide eyes. You're right about that. Gajil agreed with equally wide eyes. If he keeps this up I'm sure there won't be any trace of the area left. Pantherlily said. Dear god he could destroy Magnolia. Mira said as she looked at the ball of flame expanding before her eyes. His mouth still blazing with heat and smoke coming out of it, Igneal looked down at his enemy. Natsu narrowed his eyes, so, why you killed him? He asked his father. Igneal shook his head no, not at all, it was barely a tickle. 
just wait and see. He told the dragon slayer. And shortly after, just as he said, when the cloud of smoke clears, it reveals an uninjured Acnologia who only roars to the heavens, shocking everyone present by his uninjured state. Lucy felt her eyes widen in shock, wait, that fireball did nothing. She exclaims. Seriously? Laxus grunts in shock. How could he have survived those flames? Ezra asked. He doesn't even have a scratch, that attack should have destroyed him. Lysanna said in horror. Is he immortal? Gildertz asked. So how are we supposed to beat someone who's immortal? Wendy asked in fear. Great question, but I'm not really sure. Mira said, shaking in her shoes. Hope for the best my children, that's all we can do right now. Makarov said as he gazed upon Acnologia's form standing in thigh deep water, before a flap of his wings shot him up out of the hole Igneal's attack created. Igneal grinned in excitement as the airwaves created from Acnologia's ascent reached him, I'm fired up N.O.W. before he looked to his son, son, you're a pest. He told Natsu plainly. Natsu shook his hand in anger, what do you mean by that? You sure have a weird way of showing that you missed me. He yelled at his father. Igneal ignored it, I already told you we'll talk about everything later. He told his son. He then grew serious, I've got a job I need you to do. He told his son as Natsu grew serious. Natsu looked his father in the eye, what kind of job? He asked. Igneal smirked, you are in one of those guilds aren't you, well I'd like to officially hire you. He said as he faced Natsu towards Fairy Tail, over there. Do you see them, your Nakama? If I hadn't held back they would have all died. The island would have been destroyed and there would be nothing left of them but a memory. He said. Natsu looked at his friends in shock and realized Igneal was indeed right in his words, okay, so what do I do? He asked. I want you to get them out of here to safety. He told the dragon slayer. Natsu looked confused, why do I have to be the one to do it? He asked his father. Igneal narrowed his eyes, because you're the only one who can Natsu. Plus it will allow me to fight against Acnologia without having to hinder myself while looking out for you and your friends at my full power. He said to Natsu. Natsu narrowed his eyes, there's no other option is there? Igneal interrupted the dragon slayer, it doesn't matter. Now listen, you are not to come back and try to help me or even come to my rescue if something happens to me under any circumstance, just take them to safety, you understand? Igneal asked his son. Natsu looked to his father, well how much does this pay? He asked in return. Igneal's eyes widened, what? He exclaimed in shock from hearing that come out of his son's mouth. Natsu huffed, I work for a guild now I don't do these kinds of things for free. He said to the dragon. Igneal sighed, very well, for payment I will tell you everything you wish to know. He offered the dragon slayer. Natsu smirked, sounds like a great deal to me. He said, accepting his father's offer. Igneal grunted, good, now go get that guild of yours out of here, Natsu. He said as he threw Natsu at the guild standing down at the shores of the island. Natsu yelled back, you better keep your promise. Don't even think about going anywhere. He yelled. Igneal turned back to his enemy and answered, I want he told the teen. Now I'm all fired up. Natsu yelled out. The guild watched in shock as Natsu came racing down towards the ground, a cry of Jai Chan, catch me. Filling the air before Makarov expanded a hand and caught the flying falling Natsu with ease. Natsu, what's going on, wait Igneal throw you back? Happy asked. Yeah, what's gonna happen now? Gray asked. Did he tell you anything? Lucy pleaded. Is there any way we can help him? Urza asked. All right, that's enough, I'm sure Natsu didn't return without something. Makarov said before looking to the dragon slayer, so, what happened? He asked when everyone quieted down. My dad held back, it's the only reason you're all alive right now and why that Acnologia guy isn't dead. Natsu said it first, now, that was the reason we were all shocked when my dad finished his attack, but right now we need to get out of here. Dad isn't going to be able to hold back much longer, and besides, he made a promise. He grinned. Well I can see why he'd want us to leave, but what exactly did he promise? Laxus asked. Answers, the one thing we've been wanting for years. Natsu grinned. The loud roar drew the guild's attention, and they all gawked as they witnessed as Igneal ignited his foot in flame, Acnologia actually covering himself to avoid taking damage, only for a concussive explosion to fill the air, as Igneal launched a mighty kick at the black dragon that forced a roar of pain from Acnologia, his body flying backwards due to the sheer force of the strike. The dragon's arms flying out to try and help stabilize him in the air, only for Igneal to charge forward without fear his fist igniting in golden fire as he draws it behind his back and then slams it into Acnologia's face with such force an explosion tears through the air. So this is real dragon slayer magic at work. Lucy said in awe. To think I would live long enough to witness such an ordeal. 
Makarov said with awe as Igniel ignited the sky, his arms weaving and spinning where they watch as a ring of flame that seemingly resembled the sun appeared behind him as they hear the Dragon King roar out. Fire Dragon King Sun Wheel Explosion where the Dragon King grips the outer ring of the construct and hurls it with incredible force that it explodes on impact but not before hurling the Black Dragon hundreds of feet back from the island. Looking down, Igniel growls at the humans, what are you waiting for, get out of here now. Suddenly a dark laughter fills the air drawing back Igniel's and the guild's attention, I see, you hold back even now, because you refuse to utilize your full power, rather than simply kill me, as you desire to protect these weak humans. In that case, I'll simply wipe them all of the map. Acnologia roars as he rears his head back, drawing an immeasurable amount of power from his surroundings. Igniel feels his eyes widen as he watches as Acnologia takes his aim at the island and unleashes a breath attack, so powerful it was like witnessing a falling star fall down from the heavens themselves. Igniel roars out in desperation, stop. However Acnologia merely grins, I have to do this, if I do not then who will? He roars out, now, I'm going to blow them all to hell. And he continues to gather his incredible power, for I have the power to burn the world away. Stop you idiot. Igniel roars before he dives straight down as he races against a beam of light. Across the sea, dozens of witnesses would attest to two things happening this day. At first they would claim a star had fallen from the sky. The second would be to claim a miracle had occurred and saved all their lives. On the ground, Natsu and the others watched in horror as the attack that was easily as wide as their hometown of Magnolia approached in horror, there is nothing we can do to stop this. Is this the true power of a dragon? However, a shadow appeared in front of the light and crashed into the ground feet ahead of the small guild of humans. The humans felt their eyes widen as they watched Igniel turn a now infuriated gaze up to the heavens as he spread his wings to their limit and slammed his tail into the ground, causing the island to shake as he reared his arms back and prepared himself for a miracle. Igniel. The fire dragon slayer shouted in shock. Hell the whole guild was in shock. Just what in the hell did he think he was about to do? I am the fire dragon king. The dragon roared out with enough strength to rattle the heavens. Igniel. Natsu gasped out to his father, knowing that he was about to do something incredibly dangerous. And that's when it happened. Igniel caught the pillar of heavenly light in his claws. Igniel growled as he held the incredible amount of power in his hands, his gaze unwavering, Natsu, Wendy, Gagiel, Sting and Rogue. They are precious to this world. The dragon stated with unwavering conviction, and they cannot be lost. He growled out as he continued to hold back the energy, contain it, control it, do something that would prevent the inevitable destruction of the world at large. However, Igniel showed he wasn't known as the Fire Dragon King for nothing. The earth cracked and crumbled as the dragon continued to hold back the Black Dragon's awesome power. Makarov felt his eyes widen in shock, as he he could not believe what he was witnessing with his own eyes. I will show you, my will of fire. Igniel roared as he gripped his claws, and as he roared this out, the ground buckled underfoot of the dragon, the island shaking as gigantic waves rippled across the sea, fierce winds blowing to the point that the entire guild was nearly blind from the howling storm around them. Through the blinding light, the guild would swear till they eventually perished that Igniel's eyes went from a stunning gold to a demonic crimson with a black slit in them. Anna could only gawk as she covered her face to try and see just what was going on, I it's unreal, he's actually holding off that amount of magic with his bare hands she gasped out. Her own father had dropped his jaw in shock for how long the red dragon had held the power back but, even now the fact he continued to do so, despite the potential in dying was incredible in itself. Agile had taken a step back as he looked at the salamander's dad in shock, whoa, he gasped out silently. Was this the true power of a fire dragon? Igniel could feel his arms struggling to hold back Acnologia's attack. It was a lot stronger than he had originally thought it to be. As he continued to fight back, a memory of his own son, Ignea flashed through his mind. The brat had been a lot like him. He wondered if he was still alive or not. What of his mate, Selene, what of her sister, Tsukiyumi, his friend Kazuhana, or the twin humans he had sent forward with the others to watch over the kids, Hibiki and Hikari. Elder dragon slayers who had their own dragon sealed inside of them. Were they alright, were they happy? Grunting in exertion, Igniel snorted, damn of all the times, my life is now flashing before my eyes, and I think of that annoying brat of mine. What a despicable father I am. The dragon said to himself as he tuned the world around him out, but, there is still something I can do here and now. He roared out as his arms begun to glow a bright gold, the energy now shrinking his his bare grasp. Eyes snapping into a hard focus, Igniel slammed his foot forward to stop his movement as he grabbed the opposing side of the energy with his other hand, the power he was releasing beyond anything a normal human could produce. I will protect this world, even if I die trying. The Scarlet Dragon bellowed out. The humans who had befriended his son gasped in shock at the dragon, shouting his will out. 
they could certainly see where his son had gotten his ideals from, and the sheer fact they were witnessing his own father make such a claim while doing what he was doing was incredible. With the mighty roar that shook both the heavens and the earth, Igneil surged his power through the beam of energy, sucking it all into his body, the final wisps dispersing as he summoned his strength. When it was all said and done, the light was gone, and Igneil's body looked several shades darker, smoke pouring out from his scales from how much power currently resided in his own flesh. To their shock, Igneil slowly begun to topple backwards, giving them an incredible jolt of panic, only to stop as Igneil gave a roar that filled them with dread, his jaws clenching together as he shoved his body back into position where he hurled his arms up towards the skies, only to release a blinding pillar of flame that was just as big as Acnologia's attack, except as the power filled the sky. The two expanded to be easily four times its original size as the pillar of light shot up into the heavens above. When the pillar of flame sudden Y shot out of the planet's atmosphere and continued to fly off, the eyewitnesses were in shock. Gildertz felt himself gulp in shock, you gotta be kidding me said in a whisper. They watched as the pillar of light continued to FL through the heavens above, the large form of the moon hanging above them, drawn closer to the flame, only to take the hit as the pillar of light drilled into it. Lucy gasped in shock, I flew all the way to the moon she said in awe. Amazing Juvia said in astonishment. If this is Flame Brain's dad at full power, then how the hell do we stand a chance against Acnologia? He asked silently. Big Neil's laughter filled the air, it seems that even you aren't immune to all that power you just spat out, and to think I wanted to fight you all out, the dragon snorted before collapsing to his four paws and began huffing out, as if he were exhausted from hurtling a dense pillar into the deep recesses of space, like it was a daily workout. That ready to feel the thunder. Previously. Grunting in exertion, Igneil snorted, damn of all the times, my life is now flashing before my eyes, and I think of that annoying brat of mine. What a despicable father I am. The dragon said to himself as he tuned the world around him out, but, there is still something I can do here and now. He roared out as his arms began to glow a bright gold, the energy now shrinking his his bare grasp. Eyes snapping into a hard focus, Igneil slammed his foot forward to stop his movement as he grabbed the opposing side of the energy with his other hand, the power he was releasing beyond anything a normal human could produce. I will protect this world, even if I die trying. The Scarlet Dragon bellowed out. The humans who had befriended his son gasped in shock at the dragon, shouting his will out. They could certainly see where his son had gotten his ideals from, and the sheer fact they were witnessing his own father make such a claim while doing what he was doing was incredible. With a mighty roar that shook both the heavens and the earth, Igneil surged his power through the beam of energy, sucking it all into his body, the final wisps dispersing as he summoned his strength. When it was all said and done, the light was gone, and Igneil's body looked several shades darker, smoke pouring out from his scales from how much power currently resided in his own flesh. To their shock, Igneil slowly began to topple backwards, giving them an incredible jolt of panic, only to stop as Igneil gave a roar that filled them with dread, his jaws clenching together as he shoved his body back into position where he hurled his arms up towards the skies, only to release a blinding pillar of flame that was just as big as Acnologia's attack, except as the power filled the sky. The two expanded to be easily four times its original size as the pillar of light shot up into the heavens above. When the pillar of flame sudden Y shot out of the planet's atmosphere and continued to fly off, the eyewitnesses were in shock. Gildertz felt himself gulp in shock, you gotta be kidding me said in a whisper. They watched as the pillar of light continued to FL through the heavens above, the large form of the moon hanging above them, drawn closer to the flame, only to take the hit as the pillar of light drilled into it. Lucy gasped in shock, I it flew all the way to the moon she said in awe. Amazing Juvia said in astonishment. If this is Flame Brain's dad at full power, then how the hell do we stand a chance against Acnologia? He asked silently. Igneil's laughter filled the air, it seems that even you aren't immune to all that power you just spat out, and to think I wanted to fight you all out, the dragon snorted before collapsing to his four paws and began huffing out, as if he were exhausted from hurtling a dense pillar into the deep recesses of space, like it was a daily workout. Now. The guild was silent before suddenly erupting into cheers, the mighty fire dragon king grunting as he turned to face them, I thought I told all of you to try and get the hell out of here. He questioned before pausing and looking up with a growl, it's not over humans, retreat, I'll hold off the pest. Igneil growled as the guild cried as another roar sounded out from above them, causing the humans to freeze in place, as the fire dragon king stood tall and glared upwards. And sure enough, there he was. The Black Dragon King, the Black Dragon in the Book of Apocalypse, Dragon of Magic Acnologia. You dare try and challenge me Acnologia the Dragon King. The seemingly pissed off dragon roared. Igneil seemed to gain a fire in his eyes as he looked up to his adversary, well you finally decided to speak, any final words? He growled out. I recognize you as my enemy, dragon. And I shall slay you. 
You are more than welcome to try, but be warned, you will find that killing me will be your biggest challenge. Igniel growled. Challenge, not when you have used all your power to reflect my own spell back at me. You are weak, Fire Dragon King, but I think you will make a great adversary. But a challenge, I think not with you as you are now. If you think for a moment that I am weak from a little show of power, you are mistaken. I wouldn't have reflected that little spitfire you just used if I wasn't. He told his enemy, but it only seemed to piss off Agnologia further. If you think you have the balls to continue this, then come up here so I can rip you apart. Agnologia snarled. Big Neil snorted fire, I thought you'd never ask, punk ass bitch. And with a snarl the king of the fire dragons leapt at his enemy and collided with enough to shake the island of Tenerjima. A powerful right uppercut sent Aknologia reeling back as the red dragon in hail deeply roared as hard as he could, ebony flames erupting out his maw and slamming into the black dragon and pushing him away. As the flames died down Igniel snarled as he watched Aknologia recover his equilibrium and glare at him, I have waited for this moment for so long Aknologia he growled in anger towards the black dragon. Years ago you slaughtered dozens of dragons. He snarled, and to this day you have showed no remorse. He stated as his lips settled into a snarl as his next words were spoken with such apathy, such hatred, such loathing, the entirety of the fairy tale guild shivered in terror, I will take great joy in making you pay. All life begets life, and yours is the due that you shall pays for your crimes against dragon kind. When I kill you, the souls of the dead will rejoice, the slaughtered will have their justice, and it shall be I who bathes in your blood by scattering it across the stars. Not before the darkness wallows you life and erases you. And I shall slay you just like I did to countless numbers of your brethren. Aknologia bit back at the fire dragon, about between two of the dragon kings, neither of us shall walk away unscathed. However, I am more than prepared to take any and all forms of your power and return it back with all my power, he told Igniel. Wanna bet? The fire dragon roared out as he unleashed a tidal wave of flames from his jaws. However, Aknologia wasn't a weak foe by any means, and he gave her own bellow of magic, the two forms of magic energy clashing between them, an incredible explosion ripping through the sky around them, as a massive shockwave blasted out from where the two roars met in the middle, clouds parting miles above, and the sea beginning to boil from the sheer heat of magic being unleashed. Big Neil roared as he conjured up hundreds of orbs of flames before he unleashed them upon the black dragon, the explosion striking Aknologia relentlessly before they ran out. However, Aknologia proved his worth as the Dragon of Apocalypse when the smoke cleared to show he relatively unharmed by the attack. Aknologia growled as he headbutted the Fire Dragon King, the Fire Dragon grunting as he soared away from the blow where he had to shake his head oh clear the fog that clouded his mind momentarily. However, just as he recovered, he was shocked to find that Aknologia had lashed out with his own tail, the stinger-like appendage hitting him with enough force to throw him away from the island from sheer force. Thunder sounded through the air from the force of the blow, powerful gusts of wind blasting out from where Aknologia's tail had connected to Igniel's jaw beforehand. Those were the flames of the mighty Igniel the Fire Dragon King. Aknologia asked in seeming amusement, don't make me laugh, you are supposed the greatest of the Fire Dragons, even Atlas Flame was powerless to this might. You are nothing but a lizard trying to spout a spark. In your desire to rid the world of me, you let your powers weaken to the point they no longer harm me. He spoke as he raised a clawed hand and aimed it at Igniel before releasing Pillar of Energy, Shattered Light Palm Aknologia spoke as the land shook from the attack. Igniel growled as he was shoved further away from Aknologia and the island where Natsu and his Nakama were fleeing, now on board the small vessel on the open water, a cough of blood escaping his mouth as Aknologia hit him with a trickle of her power. However, Selene's words rang through his mind and he felt his ire grow, don't you compare me to his level I am Igniel, the Fire Dragon King. I have no equal. The fire dragon roared out as his power exploded violently as it surrounded him in a sea of flames. Pillars of fire rained down from the heavens as he exerted his will and power over his domain. Your greatest weakness is your arrogance. Igniel growled out you believe that here is nobody that can defeat you. He stated defiantly tell me that I'm wrong, I dare you. He roared at him. Aknologia grinned as he rose up once more, I believe it, because I know it's true. Roared the dragon of apocalypse, now it's my turn. He bellowed out as he inhaled deeply, ready to attack. On the small vessel, Wendy, Natsu, Gagiel, Grey and all the other mages of Fairy Tale were doing their damnedest to make way and gain distance between the seemingly two monsters that were duking it out above the heavens, explosions filling the sky with each blow they traded, neither relenting in their convictions or desire to tear their enemy to shreds. Anna grunted as the two dragon kings roared at one another, the explosion shaking both the heavens and the seas, rocking the ship with enough force to nearly capsize it as her friends all cried out in panic from the battle. Shrieks from the two dragons were heard clearly as they once more engaged in combat. Don't tell me that this is the best you are capable of. I would have expected more from Igniel the fire dragon king. 
Acnologia snarled above them, drawing the fairy tale guild's attention. You want my power, then why don't you come take it from my corpse? Igneil roared out as went berserk as he unleashed flames so mighty they turned the beautiful blue sky into a sea of blazing ebony. His body writhed and twisted as he unleashed unholy flames from his jaws, jets of red and gold mixed in the fire, giving the flames a demonic essence. The nigh unquenchable flames unleashed being unlike anything ever before seen as the crimson dragon swung his head in a frantic frenzy while he continued to bellow out his fire. Twisting and spinning, the fire dragon king didn't stop relentlessly as he undoubtedly tried to do something impossible. To burn the skies. The sudden counter had shocked the black dragon and forced him to retreat, lest he truly feel the wrath of the monster that had unleashed such powerful, having made Acnologia pull away forced to retreat, he was still a mighty enemy, but his magical powers were not powerful enough to match such devastating firepower from the red dragon as he bellowed out ebony flames. Even when his enemies had fled away from him, the fire dragon king relentlessly continued his almighty assault upon the heavens surrounding him. His head swiping to the left only to quickly swipe to the right as he began to spin around, his dark flames continuing to darken the skies around as he unleashed black flames. Unrelenting, the dragon continued its attack by aiming downwards, surrounding himself in a halo of ebony fire, before turning back around to complete the effect of trapping himself in a burning heaven as he continued to attack his enemies from his stationary position with a final spin of his gigantic frame. The sheer potency of the black fire was so devastating that the heat unleashed by Igneil's flames could be felt throughout the entirety of both the sea and sky, from miles around the fleeing Magic Council support group, all crying out as the heat seared them from dozens of miles away. The people cried out in panic as the fire seemingly blistered the flesh of the humans, only able to release cries of agony from the sheer potency of Igneil's powerful flames. But the sun now beginning to actually get lower in the sky, it was amazing to realize that despite it only being a couple hours since Igneil came to help them, the two dragons were still going at it like they had just started to fight one another. The two continued to gaze at one another as their magical energy began to build within their maws glowing with Ethernano. Finally, both roared their signature attacks. Hakai no Hoko. Fair you no Hoko. For Igneil, he launched a massive pillar of flames, while Acnologia launched a massive sky blue beam of magic, while Acnologia launched three large pale beams of yellow electricity. Time seemed to slow as the two attacks slowly approached one another. As the attacks finally collided, as everything went quiet as a bright flash envelops the two dragons. Kabuam. The silence was replaced with a massively loud explosion that erupts from the collision of the two attacks. The bright white explosion expands outwards throughout the area as it lights up the sky for several seconds and causes several mages and dragons to pause in their actions and look up to the bright white flash. The silence was replaced with a massively loud explosion that erupts from the collision of the two attacks. The bright white explosion expands outwards throughout the area as it lights up the sky for several seconds and causes several mages all to pause in their actions and look up to the bright white flash. The skies were completely illuminated in a brilliant white flash that nearly resembled daylight for a minute or so before dying down. As the night sky returned to normal, Igneil and Acnologia were still completely fine as they glared at another. The two reptilian behemoths reared back as they regarded each other for a moment. Suddenly, the two spread their wings out as they flew upwards higher into the darkening night sky. The two continued to fly up the heavens until they reached right above the clouds, the startling crimson moon shining brightly above them as they glared at one another. Igneil gave a mighty bellow as he looked towards his foe, this ends here. He roared out. Acnologia however held no such intention, well then show me what you've got. He responded eagerly. Instead of responding to the black dragon by giving a roar, Sara Omoyasu Hikari, the light that burns the sky, as he lowered his head towards his chest, as his tail curled upwards to his stomach, while his wings slowly beat to keep him airborne, while a small orb of golden energy appeared between his maw. Suddenly a loud humming sound was heard as the light of the world around was seemingly sucked into the orb between the jaws of the fire dragon king as he prepared a most lethal ability. Acnologia narrowed his beady white eyes wearily, what is he planning, that technique doesn't look like a normal technique that any dragon would use just what is that attack he is creating. The sheer amount of magical power he is concentrating into it is unlike anything I have seen from one of his kind, the black dragon thought to itself. Sensing the magic power being used, many of the wizards looked up to see what was going on. Urza felt her eyes widen in horrified shock, and Nat Natsu, what kind of attack is he casting? She asked. The salmon-haired dragon slayer shivered in horror head, something dangerous I can tell you that much. He said. What's it called? Gajil asked. The light that burns the sky. The son of Igneil said in reverence and awe and slight fear. With Urza, the redeed was extremely confused as to why all of the surrounding light was being sucked up towards the battling dragon kings, what's going on, what is this magic? She asked in confusion. 
Bray shook his head, I have no idea, but it's somehow sucking up all the light of the world. Look there. He said as he pointed to an approaching wall of blackness. Mira went wide-eyed as she saw the light of the world gather up between Igniel's jaw as well as the approaching veil of darkness, a oh, guy's question. She said. What is it? Lysanda asked as she looked to her elder sister. Is that a normal light-based magic spell or am I dead and seeing things? She asked as she pointed to the wall of darkness that was quickly gaining ground towards them. These gathering powerful levels of fire and light to turn it into a solitary attack. Natsu roared out in worry. Suddenly the world around began to grow darker as the already large wave of energy began to approach the Dragon King. The orb of light between his jaw was now noticeable as it began to grow in size with each passing second as it absorbed the light of the world around the Dragon King as he raised his head up above his head with a menacing growl that filled the heavens. Now glowing like a secondary sun in the sky, it was indeed seen from many places across the sea as it absorbed every bit of light it could. As the wave of energy approached, waves of light were being sucked into the rather large ball of energy within Igniel's grasp. With one last grasp at the light, it had absorbed nearly 85% of the light from the sky above as he spread his claw-like hands and his wings widely as the ball of light gave a hum of power as the light turned from gold into a blazing green with an expulsion of power. Raising his hands as if to grasp the powerful energy, Igniel gave a mighty roar as he swung his arms down while sending the ball of energy towards Acnologia with no remorse. Slamming into the menace, Acnologia was carried away until he crashed into the middle of the ocean, where the immensely powerful attack exploded with the equivalent force to 1.2 million tons of TNT. The explosion was seen even from the furthest points of the Alvarez Empire, as well as the most remote regions of Gultina on the opposite sides of the planet, while the world itself shook in its entirety. But even Igniel knew that the attack wasn't even close enough to being powerful enough to defeating Acnologia. This was proven correct as Acnologia came roaring up towards the fire dragon, engaging in powerful exchanges of magic and raw strength alike with his enemy. The fairy tale guild cried out as massive tidal waves washed over the ship, nearly capsizing the vessel multiple times in a row, the swells ripping it into the air and nearly submerging the main deck, the mast holding the sails now ripped off by the shockwaves being thrown about like party favors, Natsu, tell your freaking dad to calm down, we need to get back to the mainland alive. Bray called out as he held onto the railing. Igniel roars as he shoves Acnologia back as the two glower at one another, the two were in a standoff as they glared at one another. A low humming growl rose out of Igniel's throat as the two lunged forward. Igniel quickly tilts his head as the black dragon tries to chomp on Igniel's neck. The fire dragon king dragon quickly retaliates with a swift swipe of his claws onto Acnologia head's cheek. The black dragon screeched in pain as it felt some blood oozing out of the wound, deep scars now bleeding heavily, bones easily seen from the gouged out flesh torn from his body. With a bellow of rage, Acnologia charges ahead. A split moment later, the two dash at one another. With that the two dragons clash with one another, a powerful shockwave erupting from the point of the collision as Igniel bites his enemy on the neck. Spins around in the air a couple of times before the two end up crashing down to sea, causing it to shake from the impact as they went under the water mere feet from the council ships. The two dragons roll over one another and land on their feet in the murky depths as they begin to fight one another in earnest to show the world why it was that they resided on the tip of the food chain. Acnologia smashed his tail into the side of Igniel's head to try and stun him, but the fire dragon king readily ignored the pain as he swiped his claws across one of Acnologia's neck wounds in a shower of gore and blood which caused the ebony dragon to groan out. Despite being larger than his adversary, Acnologia was certainly met with considerable opposition from the Fire Dragon King, as it showed that his foe hadn't earned his title by chance. However, Acnologia was more resourceful than most gave him credit for and wrapped a tail under Igniel's feet and caused a black dragon to stumble and fall onto his back, where the two dragons crashed through an underwater pillar of stone tearing it down like weed in a field. Not holding back, Igniel released a powerful breath attack that instantly set the sea alight as it boiled away, where it sent Acnologia sliding back before the two dragons spread their wings and took to the sky once more as they leapt up out of the ocean. Once again in the sky, the two dragons roared out before diving down towards their respective enemy, Igniel giving a loud roar that was readily returned. Closing the gaps within moments, the red dragon begins charging energy into his right claw as the Ethernano condensed into a familiar sphere. Igniel quickly dodges a swipe meant to rip him in two, but rolls closer and roars, carry Rasengan, fire dragon spiral sphere, the spiraling sphere is slammed into Acnologia's abdomen. Acnologia grunts as he is sent flying back as the sphere explodes and engulfed his entire body. However, Igniel knew this fight would not be that easy. He was proven right as azure pillars of magic flew out of the explosion, with Igniel swiftly dodging several of the bolts that came out of the smoke cloud. When the dust cleared, there was Acnologia without a scratch on his body. 
Despite the two dragons fighting an eye-godly fight with one another, the humans remained unharmed. Altier and Meridi were extremely lucky to have been gathered up by Fairy Tail as they were fleeing, but unfortunately the battle between the two dragons had pushed them close enough to the point they were now right up on the Rune Knight's ships. Altier now being questioned as to all the things she has done to deceive the council regarding her true loyalties, and no lies were spoken when she explained her story from the very beginning on how she originally believed her mother had abandoned her years ago the explosions in the sky. The two dragons wailing and challenge making it difficult to speak as each attack rocked the ship despite being miles overhead. Luckily Meridi was spared the potential arrest due to her age, and Makarov also stamped her with the guild mark to hide her from the council workers, moments before they were rescued from the now sunken vessel. Roars from above made the humans duck on reflex as they looked up to watch the battle, lay her gulping in horror as he watched the two dragons soar past them for several miles, before once again re-engaging in their mortal combat, to think, Igneal the Fire Dragon King would side with humanity against the Black Dragon of the Apocalypse. He muttered as Igneal smashed a fist into Acnologia's jaw. That's dad for ya, always trying his best to help those in need. Natsu grinned. Lay her, we need to warn the populace near Harjan, they'll be in the most immediate threat of the dragons if they ever reach landfall, we have to begin immediate evacuations of the civilians. He told the man. We have to go through all the proper Chan Lay her began to explain, only for Makarov to grow to immense sizes, shut up, there is no time for you to be debating this. There are two dragons that are fighting a battle to the death, making their way towards innocent people, and you want to file paperwork to make sure you don't get into trouble. Screw your regulations, and do the morally right thing. Grab a lacrima and broadcast your proof, get them to listen to you, they will understand that houses can be replaced lives cannot. He ordered. Lay her nodded before he turned to a subordinate, G grab a lacrima, W we ga. He cried out as the ship was nearly rocked over onto its side, causing everyone to stumble roughly, we need to tell warn everyone, now. He cried out as the explosion that lit up the sky died down. On the sidelines, Lay her and Mest were trying their best to quickly work on making the cameras synchronized to a level they would be content with. Though they were simply mind blown at the recent conversations, they didn't let those words get in the way of their jobs. Like a light bulb suddenly illuminating inside his head, the head captain of the Rune Knights gasped loudly at what he discovered. Holding in the excitement he had building up inside, he turned towards the instantly confused group of mages in front of him. Taking a short sigh, Leher held a wide smile on his face. I, I am a genius. He stuttered proudly and visibly jumped from his position before explaining to the confused mest and surrounding wizards, I knew there was a way to make Lacrima video feeding even better than the makers had originally planned. Though I knew this live feed media Lacrima was a new device, this version of the technology is completely state of the art. I haven't seen anything like it in my entire life. With the knowledge I held regarding camera work, I was able to tinker with the mechanism and follow through with making history in the making. With Laxus and powering the frequency, I was able to tune into the device and formulate a new frequency altogether. I'm proud to say whatever's transpiring here and now between the dragons will now be aired live on national television all across the populace of Fiori. He said in ecstatic shock to the wizards as they all gasped, that's right. Every person in this nation will watch this momentous occasion from the comfort of their television screens. With the help of my technological expertise, I have connected with the council's radio tower, which has now been synchronized with this frequency as well. All I need to do is switch on the equipment and we'll be good to go. He concluded as he swallowed harshly and clapped his hands together to try and contain his excitement. Shocked to the core, every single last one of fairy tale populace gasped loudly with their eyes the size of dinner plates. If they were hearing everything correctly, the battle that was about to go down was going to be aired live on every television set in Fiori. If they weren't impressed at Leher's prowess of knowing science and shit like this in the past, they definitely were now. Leher san, this is wonderful news indeed. I request you immediately set up the device and air this on national television. I'm sure the populace of Fiori will be astonished at what is going to happen. Rest assured, you and your men will go down in history as national heroes for trying to save the populace against a battle between two of the strongest dragons to have ever existed. Proceed with your plan. Makarov said in a sagely tone, to which Leher instantly switched on his equipment. Just then, a large lacrima screen hovered midair, showing a clear-cut view of the battlefield. A explosion lightening up the skies above the sea as the dragons clashed once again, the roars of battle filling the air as the two kings battled on without pause. A second later, the imagery got even clearer, and what appeared on the screen caused Leher to stumble back with sputters escaping his lips, while Mest was simply crippling at the knees from the news. Chuckling inwardly, the fairy tale mages shook their heads at the reaction before looking intently at the battlefield, which was now fixated on the two snarling dragons flying in the heavens. 
All that's left is to activate the green button so the imagery could appear on every television set in the world. And soon it was done, they were live. Gulping Leher spoke nervously as another explosion went off above them, causing several knights to flinch, as salutations. I am Leher, the head captain of Ifiori Rune Knights. He stuttered lightly as he rose to his feet with a microphone in his hands before continuing, I am proud to present the latest in technology, and it's a great honor to know my associates are the first to attempt it. This is coming to you live from the former S-class promotional exams of Fairy Tale. Without the full information, I will let Master Makarov, the guild master of Fairy Tale, to give his own accounts of everything so far. Thank you for your patience, and I can only hope everyone understands and listens with full attention for what they see. And he turns to the midget and hands him the microphone. Now holding the microphone, Makarov took a small breath. Citizens of Fiori. My name is Makarov Dreyer and I'm Fairy Tale's third guild master. He announced seriously, this is history in the making, and what you'll know undoubtedly see now will certainly catch your interest. A clash of titans. A fight between kings. You may have heard the legends of the apocalypse dragon, but everyone will see the legendary beast up close. He said seriously as another explosion went off as the two dragons roared at one another with everything they had, that's right, as you can see, by the powerful ethereal level explosions going off above, there is a battle going on. He said as the bat rocked roughly in place. This will be a live video recording of our very own Natsu Dragneel's very own foster father, whom he has been searching for for the last seven years, Igneel the Fire Dragon King himself, battling against the legendary Acnologia. He said as the camera turned and zoomed in onto the two battling Goliaths for a moment before turning back to Makarov, and now. Now, it's time for you all to tune into this historic event. He explained in a sagely tone and handed the recording instrument to Leher, who immediately turned off the device. XXX various locations in Fiori XXX. Live transmissions fed into the guilds of Sabertooth, Lamia Scale, Blue Pegasus, Twilight Ogre, Quattro Cerberus, and Mermaid Heel. Several other legal guild across Fiori were now also tuning into their respective television sets. Along with those structures, every town square area throughout the nation held their central television set fixedly, permitting the transmission to go through. There were shouts heard from all across Fiori, while others held dead silence. Everyone that was present in the necessary areas were now tuning into the match that could very well go down in history. And there was no doubt, history was now being made. You ahahahaha Cliffinger no Jutsu. I'm so evil doing that to you guys. Leher, we need to warn the populace near Harjan, they'll be in the most immediate threat of the dragons if they ever reach landfall, we have to begin immediate evacuations of the civilians. He told the man. We have to go through all the proper Chan Leher began to explain, only for Makarov to grow to immense sizes, shut up, there is no time for you to be debating this. There are two dragons that are fighting a battle to the death, making their way towards innocent people, and you want to file paperwork to make sure you don't get into trouble. Screw your regulations, and do the morally right thing. Grab a lacrima, and broadcast your proof, get them to listen to you, they will understand that houses can be replaced lives cannot. He ordered. Leher nodded before he turned to a subordinate, G grab a lacrima, W we ga. He cried out as the ship was nearly rocked over onto its side, causing everyone to stumble roughly, we need to tell warn everyone, now. He cried out as the explosion that lit up the sky died down. Live transmissions fed into the guilds of Sabertooth, Lamia Scale, Blue Pegasus, Twilight Ogre, Quattro Cerberus, and Mermaid Heel. Several other legal guild across Fiori were now also tuning into their respective television sets. Along with those structures, every town square area throughout the nation held their central television set fixedly, permitting the transmission to go through. There were shouts heard from all across Fiori, while others held dead silence. Everyone that was present in the necessary areas were now tuning into the match that could very well go down in history. And there was no doubt, history was now being made. Now. If you want to beat me Igneal. You're going to have to try harder. The black dragon warned, and don't think I'll just stand here and do nothing. Acnologia mocked. You'd be fucking arrogant to just stand there and do nothing. If I can't beat you by ripping off your head, then I will have to beat you until you can't get up. Igneal snarled in response. The ebony and blue dragon laughed. Oh come now. Don't act like you're not enjoying this fight, Igneal. Acnologia lectured. You're right I am enjoying this. But I am on a timetable, so let's speed things up. And how do you props that? Acnologia grunted. The power of fire is the power to burn everything, to burn the world. Igneal said as his power spiked again, and to live amongst the raging flames. He bellowed as pillars of fire rained down from the sky and crashed around the ocean around them, igniting the water and boiling it away in massive clouds of steam. Die. Acnologia roared out releases another mighty breath attack at Igneal. Of course Igneal had felt his eyes widen and flapped his wings and dodged the attack by going over it. 
the energy soared by him and exploded in the clouds and once more lit the night sky up. With that the fight of kings continued on, igniting his fist Igniel slammed it into his enemy and sent him flying back once again. Rising up with only a few scraps on him, Aknologia then gave a roar, causing several pillars of energy to erupt from the ground with powerful explosions as he drew his head back and clenched his muscles up while filling his jaw with a massive amount of magic. But the roar here released it all straight at Igniel who dodged to the left as the attack detonated and released a wave of flame at his enemy. Aknologia easily dodged the flames with ease and gave a roar. Charging one another both dragons gave powerful roars that sounded through the air. Igniel growled at his enemy, I'll end this with one blow. He declared before he coated his fist with fire, while the black dragon had gathered his magic and a large amount of energy between all his jaws. Releasing the attacks they were overcome by the sheer force of their power, and an explosion erupted, creating a pillar of raw power that lit up the nighttime sky. Not even the full moon over their heads shone as bright as the explosion had. Laxa stumbled back several steps as he felt the ship rock back from the shockwave. His eyes were wide as he watched the night lit up brightly, what's that, a flash of light? He questioned as he regains his balance. That's when all observing parties see the powerful shockwave of the battle reach them. Gray felt his eyes widen before he ducked behind some cover, Lysanna and Elfman saw this and felt their eyes widen in shock when it reached them, we need to take cover. She said as her brother ran over to her and shielded her with his large body. Elfman groaned from the heat, I it's hot, incredibly so. What do we do? He exclaimed. While well, it seemed as if the humans were having a rough time, which they kinda were, the ships were being pushed closer and closer to the shore from the sheer power of the shockwaves as the citizens watched the fighting draw closer and closer to them. Suddenly a large fireball came crashing down and obliterated the ship nearby the vessel exploding violently as men were sent careening into the air before falling into the sea, which caused him to shield his face from the heat. Grey groaned, this is it, we're finally done for. As he tried to beat away the heat. Natsu looked to his friend, don't you go and give up on me. He told the man. Hana had finally reached her friends and was trying to direct some of the others to hide, as she pointed to a staircase, everyone got to the nearest place of cover immediately. Anything will do. She told them as they did as she said and jumped in the stairwell. Another shockwave came and forced everyone to cover their eyes as the ship tipped harshly, aw come on, you have got to be kidding me. Gildert stated in frustration. Evergreen was holding onto a large wall hoping she didn't get blown away, I it feels like I'm being blown away. She said as she held on tighter. When the light dies down the people rise up and see that both Aknologia and Igniel are hovering in the air while facing towards their enemy. Harla gulps as she watches the two dragons stare down one another, they've been going at it for a while now and neither one shows signs of stopping. She said. Igniel has this, he is the strongest here after all. Natsu said. Yeah but you also know he is facing the black dragon king. Aknologia is one level of his own. There is nothing we can do but hope he succeeds in his fight. Lucy responded. The dragons each give a roar as they take to the sky once again. Igniel goes into a quick dive with a growl, is this all you are capable of, show me something that entertains me. He told his rival with anger. With that the two dragons clash with one another as the two of them once more come crashing down to earth, causing it to shake from the impact. They had finally reached the shore of the now abandoned town of Harjan. Things had finally gotten to the breaking point and would only get worse than ever from here on. The large gathering of airborne rocks and dust quickly heads towards them and Marahin feels her eyes widen, incoming, get down. She exclaims loudly as everyone ducks for cover. Bajil groans in annoyance, what the hell are they up to now? He asked. There's nothing we can do but watch and endure, this fight is way beyond us. Urza said factually, the two dragons roaring as they race into the heavens once again. Aknologia draws his head back once more and releases a breath attack at Igniel, striking him in the chest that sends him sliding back through a mountain, causing it to collapse on top of him. Igniel growls in annoyance as he surges his power once again as he leaps out of the rubble. Glaring at Aknologia, Igniel begins his next attack. Circling his arms in a large arc, Igniel gathered up a series of golden-colored magic energy spheres and sprouted six orb orbs of light in a circular formation. This then forms an orange circular force field in front of himself before creating swirly light blue lines from the edge to the center as the shield disappears. With a loud roar, he then fires a light blue beam from the center of the lines at his enemy, who was unable to dodge in time and was once again slammed into the ground with explosive force. Rising up Aknologia releases a roar as he spreads his wings widely. The black dragon then gathers a large ball of raw power in front of his body and then quickly launches it towards the fire dragon king as he hits it with his tail stinger tip. Dodging to the right in a roll, Igniel watches as it explodes in a dome of light that lit the sky up brightly. Raising his head up to the sky, Aknologia releases a roar. 
As this happens, dark thunderclouds quickly gather up before releasing a series of powerful lightning bolts down onto his body. With a roar the black dragon releases a powerful blast of electricity at Igneal that explodes seconds before it hits the dragon king as he struck it with his fist where Igneal was enveloped in the lightning. Charging one another both acted on instinct. With that the two dragons clash once again. Separating themselves, Igneal swings his tail at Acnologia, only for it to be blocked with Acnologia's own. Igneal once more forms six more orbs of energy before Heroes as the orbs explode out into powerful beams of blinding light. Acnologia flaps his wings to escape the blast. The six beams missed by a few meters only to strike a mountain down below in a display of golden light. The two dragons didn't hesitate to race towards one another to try and strike one another. Acnologia's jaw gathered an immense amount of energy as Igneal covered his hand in a golden black red magical energy and threw his fist at Acnologia as the two dragons roared at one another before they were enveloped in a powerful explosion of magic and power. As the light of the explosion died down, the two dragons gave loud bellowing roars as they raced towards one another. Igneal and Acnologia clashed into one another with such force the world around them seemed to warp inwards. Igneal gave a mighty bellow as he checked the black dragon and sent Acnologia spiraling backwards and nearly falling out of the sky. However, Acnologia wasn't the greatest of his kind without reason and quickly righted himself as he gave a loud screech and gathered his own power within himself, causing his throat to glow brightly before he unleashed a blast of power from his jaws. Seeing the energy rush towards him, Igneal drew his own head back and gathered his magic within his own throat, causing his throat to glow once more before he unleashed a powerful beam of his own magical energy that clashed into the black dragon's magic beam with explosive force that lit up the sky. The sheer amount of force brought forth from the clashing attacks was enough to part the clouds that had been gathered earlier and even produced enough gale force to actually rush across the land below. Ah! Levy cried as she stumbled back from the powerful winds. Be damn it! Gildertz grunted out. So this is the power of a dragon king, we never stood a chance. Urza said in shock as she recovered. Natsu grunted as he shielded his face, H how is he so strong? He asked. Back with the two clashing dragons of unequal power, is that all you have, Igneal? Acnologia asked, come now, you can do better than that. Igneal shrugged as he smirked at them. As you wish. The two dragons collided against one another multiple times as sonic booms with gold and blue energy erupting from each of their collisions. This continued for several minutes before the two separated several feet away before dashing forward to clash once more. This time the two stayed in the same spot as they fought for dominance before they were enveloped in a bright flash. Inside of the light, Acnologia leaned out of the way of a powerful strike and grabbed his foe behind the neck and wrapped his tail around Igneal with a gleam in his eyes. With a flap of his wings, Acnologia began to dive with the still-trapped Dragon King of the Fire, being forced to move with his enemy. Emerging from the clouds the dragons crashed into the mountain beneath them so hard the entire thing was turned to dust from the sheer force behind their fall. Acnologia rose from the dust and gave a mighty roar as he spread his wings at Igneal, causing stone to arc off his body, as well as a large amount of dust. Igneal flapped his wings to clear the air and roared in tandem with his foe. Acnologia then rushed towards Igneal, but the dragon swiped at his opponent and then struck him across the face. Igneal gave a roar and released another blast of energy at Acnologia. Acnologia of course dodged where the energy slammed into the ground and created another explosion. When the flash dissipated the two kings were spiraling together as the two dragons continued to fight as they descended to the ground below, roars of battle soon following the two. The two drilled into the ground, sending a quake throughout the entire city landscape and causing everyone to stumble from the sheer force of the land below. The behemoths continued to burrow underground until they reach a clearing they stumbled into. Gray felt his jaw drop, did they just crash? He asked stunned. I think one dragged the other down. Elfman said, confused. Igneal and Acnologia disappeared, but where did they go? Levy said, confused. W what just happened? Happy asked frantically. I can't answer that. Carla told the blue feline. The others, specifically the dragon slayers, could feel the ground shaking and even hear loud explosions ripping the earth apart underneath them, what's with all this shaking? Levy asked. Like literally what was happening right now. Agil looks at the ground and notices that several rocks are bouncing and narrows his eyes, there's something beneath us. He stated gaining their attention. What? Lucy exclaims in shock. Levy narrows her eyes, not the dragons. She stated. Agil nodded, I think it is, the grounds are about to get real unstable. He told the girls honestly. Where Wendy, Elfman, Lysanna and Mira were, they too felt the earth splitting battle beneath them. Elfman narrowed his eyes, something tells me that this isn't an earthquake. He stated as he felt the earth shake again. Lysanna landed on a crumbling wall and looked to her brother, you don't think that she started to say, but trailed off. 
Elfman shook his head well we saw those two monsters go down fighting didn't we? He asked her as he held onto a rock for stability. Mira nodded well on the plus side, we don't have to worry about being roasted alive again. She said in relief. Elfman shook his head at don't count on it yet. He told her. Lysanna nodded in agreement yeah I can still feel the heat from up here. She agreed. Evergreen looked at Elfman so nobody is safe. He asked, getting a nod from both of the Strauss siblings. As long as Igniel and that Acnologia are still fighting, nobody is, Elfman stated as he looked at the ground wearily. Over at a different location, Laxus looked to his grandfather Hey Gigi he stated. Makarov looked to his boy I'm here Laxus. He replied as Gildertz grunted. Yeah for now at least. The A said. Laxus ignored him and continued this shaking, what is it? It's Igniel and that other dragon there is no other explanation. The old man said to his young descendant. The trio had seen Igniel go crashing down into the ground, but since they didn't see Igniel get up before the shaking, it was the most obvious answer he could give his grandson. However the ground starts glowing red and the ground suddenly shakes hard, causing them to stumble, where they quickly go wide-eyed when they realize what was about to happen. Several pillars of fire, earth and energy erupted from the ground before Makarov grew worried, everyone find the nearest place you can find cover at now. He ordered. Anna grabs onto a large rock and holds on tightly, we just can't catch a frigging break can we? She exclaims loudly. Elfman hides behind a large piece of rubble with Gagiel, Grayer on the wrong side. He shouts out to the man. Gray shakes his head at his friend don't worry about me, I'll be alright. He responds. However the ground where they had been standing before begins to glow a deep red before it starts to burn. Oh shit. Suddenly a monumental pillar of energy erupts from the glowing area where the two dragons quickly emerges from the earth, Acnologia giving a roar of anger, quickly followed by Igniel. The black dragon stops his advance as he releases a breath attack which Igniel easily dodges. The attack hits the ground causing a large explosion. Igniel emerged from the cloud of smoke before he looked at the now clear area, seeing the black dragon glaring at him. Rarg the dragon roars at his foe which causes Acnologia to roar right back at him in anger for not killing him. Grey groans, aw come on you're kidding me. He exclaims as the dragons continue their battle. I will not fall like this Igniel. Damn it, it all to hell. Why won't you die? Igniel roars as his body is coated in red energy and lunge towards the speeding Acnologia. The dragons bow collided against one another as magical shockwaves ripple from the collision. The two separate and become literal balls of energy as they blitz through the sky as they continue to clash against one another. With each clash between the two, a flash of flamer energy ignites between them as their power illuminates the sky, showing their silhouettes to the mages below them. The two had one last clash as they tried to dominate the other, but the two were locked in another stalemate. Both growled as they pushed more power into their attack and caused more energy to ripple from the two. After one final shove, the two jumped back and retaliated again with. Here you know Hoko. Hakai no Hoko. The two signature attacks collided once more in a bright explosion as the two stared each other down. Igniel narrowed his eyes. He needed to end this fight. He had one way to do so, but was hoping to save this for more dire situations, it wasn't that time quite yet. Acnologia began powering up his energy to counter anything Igniel may have in store for him. The two continued to rise their magical power as their auras collided against one another. Lightning crackled from the shockwaves their auras created as they clashed against one another. Clash after clash, attack after attack, the two kings were relentless in their assaults before Acnologia landed a hit that would end up forcing Igniel down to the ground on his back, where he was quick to pin him, Igniel could feel his body falling before slamming hard into the ground around the destroyed landscape as he grunted from the crash, is that all you've got? Acnologia snarled out to the Crimson Dragon, I expected more from Igniel, the Fire Dragon King. He bellowed out as he shoved the dragon into the earth as he bellowed out as he slammed a hand down on the Fire Dragon. Igniel growled as he glared at his enemy, thanks to you, my powers have been dormant for quite some time. He bit out, only to grunt as Acnologia slammed down into his gut once again as he bit into his throat and drew blood. If this was the end, he needed to tell him he needed to tell Natsu everything. But no other potential option, Igniel reached out to the human he called Sun and his friends, bringing them into a large telepathic chat line, so he could tell them all, Sun. He called out to him as Natsu and the others gasped as they all heard Igniel's voice ring through their heads. Dad, where are you? Natsu called out in worry, that call didn't sound like much, but even the single word was spoken in desperation. Rather than tell the humans his location, Igniel spoke what he needed to speak, I owe you an explanation. And I'm going to give it to you while I still can. He told Natsu honestly calmly, try not to interrupt me while I talk. He told him, contrary to what you think, I did not seal myself into by chance. When I granted you dragon slayer magic, it threatened to kill you, as you had immediately had awoken your dragon force at 3. 
I sealed a portion of my conscious into you to subdue the sheer energy you were expelling at the time, and that's when the discovery was made all. Five dragon slayers were cursed with a dragonification process that would slowly turn them into dragons. You, Gagiel, Wendy, Sting and Rogue were all subjected to this curse, and so all five of us decided to enact a plan to ensure your survival. Igneel told Natsu, as they were dragged into a small mindscape where they saw the snarling visage of Igneel, his sight showing that Acnologia had him pinned beneath him and now crushing him beneath his feet he was sharing his sight with them, secondly, the reason we did so was to create antibodies within you. To keep you from ever undergoing any physical transformation. Thankfully, that process was successful and you will never experience the dragonification that Acnologia once did. He said, his words shocking the humans. Acnologia was once a human. The vision of Acnologia pinning Igneel changed, and now they all looked up at the dragon as he sat before them, his wings spread widely as he gazed down upon them, every bit as regal as a true dragon king. Igneel had a remorseful look upon his face as he continued to explain his reasoning, but this image was shattered as they all suddenly watched Natsu take off in a direction where powerful explosions went off signaling Igneel and Acnologia's presence, where are you going? Grey called out in shock. Igneel's voice was still being shared to the humans, even as Natsu ran desperately towards the one being who showed him love, the process of creating these antibodies was very delicate and required all our energy. That's why we never made contact or made our presence known to you. Igneel explained sorrowfully, and finally, we were waiting for the perfect moment in time to fox our mistakes. It was our destructive legacy that brought Acnologia to this world and we wanted to be the ones to personally eliminate him. He bit out to his son. No. Natsu cried out as Acnologia's tail swiped away a cloud of dust, revealing both of the dragon kings, this isn't how it was supposed to be. He called out to his father the guild listening in silence as father and son talked what could only be their final words with one another, just hang in there a little longer. He told Igneel in desperation as he ran with all his might towards the battle, we're gonna take him down side by side. He assured his father. Igneel snarled in rage, no. This isn't your fight, Natsu. He roared out in anger for the first time in a very long time at the boy, Igneel rearing back and roaring out loudly, he's more powerful than we imagined. You must stay away. That is an order, boy. He roared out as Acnologia stomped down on Igneel once again as he reveled in his fight against Igneel. I don't care. Natsu roared back in defiance, you left me once, and I'm not gonna let you leave me again. He shouted aloud as he continued to run ahead towards his father, he needed to hurry. Igneel gave a desperate roar, the sound traveling across the land as he gave it his all to try and make his final stand shocking Acnologia, when he wouldn't stay down and die as he had planned. Humans across the continent watching in both horror and sorrow, watched as Igneel gave his final fighting push, I have waited for this moment for so long. He called out aloud, his voice traveling across the earth to be heard by all who were watching his last stand, smashing a fist into Acnologia as he pushed him off his body, where another explosion ripped the land apart from the raw force of his strike, once I have slain you, the dead can rest peacefully. Fear will never plague mankind again. Acnologia gave powerful wingbeats and took to the sky as he looked down upon the red dragon, while the fire dragon king rose up to meet his challenger. With twin roars the dragons once more made a final charge at one anther and then, Blood filled the air. Igneel growled as he glared at his enemy, thanks to you, my powers have been dormant for quite some time. He bit out, only to grunt as Acnologia slammed down into his gut once again as he bit into his throat and drew blood. If this was the end, he needed to tell him he needed to tell Natsu everything. With no other potential option, Igneel reached out to the human he called Sun and his friends, bringing them into a large telepathic chat line so he could tell them all, Sun. He called out to him as Natsu and the others gasped as they all heard Igneel's voice ring through their heads. Dad, where are you? Natsu called out in worry, that call didn't sound like much, but even the single word was spoken in desperation. Rather than tell the humans his location, Igneel spoke what he needed to speak, I owe you an explanation. And I'm going to give it to you while I still can. He told Natsu honestly calmly, try not to interrupt me while I talk. He told him, contrary to what you think, I did not seal myself into by chance. When I granted you dragon slayer magic, it threatened to kill you, as you had immediately had awoken your dragon force at three. I sealed a portion of my conscious into you to subdue the sheer energy you were expelling at the time, and that's when the discovery was made all, five dragon slayers were cursed with a dragonification process that would slowly turn them into dragons. You, Gagiel, Wendy, Sting and Rogue were all subjected to this curse, and so all five of us decided to enact a plan to ensure your survival. Igneel told Natsu, as they were dragged into a small mindscape where they saw the snarling visage of Igneel, his sight showing that Acnologia had him pinned beneath him and now crushing him beneath his feet he was sharing his sight with them, secondly, the reason we did so was to create antibodies within you. 
to keep you from ever undergoing any physical transformation. Thankfully, that process was successful, and you will never experience the dragonification that Acnologia once did. He said, his words shocking the humans. Acnologia was once a human. The vision of Acnologia pinning Igneal changed, and now they all looked up at the dragon as he sat before them, his wings spread widely as he gazed down upon them, every bit as regal as a true dragon king. Igneal had a remorseful look upon his face as he continued to explain his reasoning, but this image was shattered as they all suddenly watched Natsu take off in a direction where powerful explosions went off signaling Igneal and Acnologia's presence, where are you going? Grey called out in shock. Igneal's voice was still being shared to the humans, even as Natsu ran desperately towards the one being who showed him love, the process of creating these antibodies was very delicate and required all our energy. That's why we never made contact or made our presence known to you. Igneal explained sorrowfully, and finally, we were waiting for the perfect moment in time to fix our mistakes. It was our destructive legacy that brought Acnologia to this world, and we wanted to be the ones to personally eliminate him. He bit out to his son. No. Natsu cried out as Acnologia's tail swiped away a cloud of dust, revealing both of the dragon kings, this isn't how it was supposed to be. He called out to his father the guild listening in silence as father and son talked what could only be their final words with one another, just hang in there a little longer. He told Igneal in desperation as he ran with all his might towards the battle, we're gonna take him down side by side. He assured his father. Igneal snarled in rage, no. This isn't your fight, Natsu. He roared out in anger for the first time in a very long time at the boy, Igneal rearing back and roaring out loudly, he's more powerful than we imagined. You must stay away. That is an order, boy. He roared out as Acnologia stomped down on Igneal once again as he reveled in his fight against Igneal. I don't care. Natsu roared back in defiance, you left me once, and I'm not gonna let you leave me again. He shouted aloud as he continued to run ahead towards his father, he needed to hurry. Igneal gave a desperate roar, the sound traveling across the land as he gave it his all to try and make his final stand shocking Acnologia, when he wouldn't stay down and die as he had planned. Humans across the continent watching in both horror and sorrow, watched as Igneal gave his final fighting push, I have waited for this moment for so long. He called out aloud, his voice traveling across the earth to be heard by all who were watching his last stand, smashing a fist into Acnologia as he pushed him off his body, where another explosion ripped the land apart from the raw force of his strike, once I have slain you, the dead can rest peacefully. Fear will never plague mankind again. Acnologia gave powerful wing beats and took to the sky as he looked down upon the red dragon, while the fire dragon king rose up to meet his challenger. With twin roars the dragons once more made a final charge at one anther and then blood, filled the air. Now. The two dragons were airborne there was no doubt about that. However, the most shocking and unnerving factor was the sight of what the world had just witnessed. Two of the strongest dragons had just quite literally ripped into one another and amputated limbs from their foes. However, Igneal was the only one who was still able to move. The reason. Acnologia had been torn in two by the fire dragon king's dirty attack. Meaning, Igneal had made a secret attack as the two dragons had tried to rip another's limb off. Igneal and Acnologia spat out the limbs in their mouths, and Acnologia was gagging in his own blood, shock and horror, filling his mind as he begun to fall to the earth. Igneal meanwhile took a higher vantage point and inhaled deeply, intense heats filling the back of his throat as he growled deeply, and roared with all his might a pillar of flame falling upon Acnologia like a meteor, before detonating in a massive fireball the final blow, to end the darkness of dragon kind. However, even as the smoke and flames died down, Igneal wasn't down as he dropped down into his smoke Natsu remaining still, despite not knowing what his old man was doing, until a loud snap was heard something with bones definitely breaking. The powerful swipe of a claw and the smoke was cleared away to reveal Acnologia's neck had been twisted to such an angel, his body faced the exact opposite direction. Surprisingly enough, Igneal's severed arm was undamaged by the attack he had unleashed upon his fallen enemy, Rod in Hell, and Don't Come Back. Igneal growled as he walked away limped more like the hand he lost being grabbed as he left. Be dad why you killed him. Natsu said in shock. Igneal nodded, I did. He agreed. Natsu sputtered, B but you you just said he was stronger than even you were, s so how did why you kill him? He asked a red dragon. I used a small illusion at the last moment just before we struck at one another. Igneal begun, it was done in such a way that even if he had removed it from his senses, it'd be too late to stop ourselves from killing one another. But, for better understanding, just know I made it seem as if I pulled a fast one on him and barely grasped my victory. He told Natsu. That's so what now? Natsu asked. Well, we go see your friends and I fully explain everything. Igneal said calmly as he put the severed arm into his mouth. So, why do you keep that severed arm, it's kinda weird. Natsu said. 
Igneil responded telepathically, because, I know someone that can reattach it to me. It'll leave another scar, but I'll be able to use my arm again. He explained to Natsu. You talking about Grandy me? I don't know dad, Wendy says her mom is better at healing than her, but I don't think that this could be considered anything. Natsu said skeptically. No, not Grandini. Igneil responded curtly, she's a dragon yes, but not Grandini, she does a completely different style of healing. He told his son. So, will it be like, rotten or something by the time the arm is reattached? Natsu asked. Igneil snorted, nothing like that. He explained. So, what happens now? Natsu asked. Once I explain everything, I will ready myself for a journey to search my associate out to heal me, then, I search for the others not sealed away for the time, with my breaking of the seal, the others will have been unleashed as well, and who knows where they are at the current time. I need to do this Natsu, but at least this time I am not simply vanishing, I promise that I will return in due time. Igneil swore. How long will you be gone? Natsu asked his father. A couple months at the most, this kind of healing requires time to make right. I will return to you in time. The dragon promised his son, let your friends know that we will meet again in the near future. He said calmly. B do you think you could learn how to transform into a human, a magic spell, so you could be among us in the guild, as a part of it? Natsu asked hopefully. Igneil shook his head, no, I am sorry Natsu, but I cannot join your little guild, my power would be seen as a threat to your people, and a war would break out in time. However, that doesn't mean I cannot visit from time to time to see you and help refine your abilities. He said as he spread his wings, I must leave now, but I will see you soon my son. And with powerful beats of his wings, Igneil left, but this time, Natsu knew he would see his father once again in the near future. The Well of Souls is a deep caldera 100 meters across. It is ringed with enormous willow trees whose roots seem to pour down the sheer rock walls like candle wax. At the bottom, in a natural amphitheater, the monks and priestesses are clustered around a central rock outcropping which forms a kind of dais and altar. Shafts of dawn light reach to the bottom of the grotto, lighting a single willow the mother tree. Ancient and gnarled, it grows in the center of the rock. Its roots spread down to the grotto floor, where they merge with the roots of the willows ringing the well forming a braided mat resembling the surface of a brain. The mother tree sits in a basin roughly 60 meters in diameter, shielded by its own unusual formation of small rock arches that give the impression of a shell encasing it, increasing its sense of security and protection. The worshippers are surrounding a great body nearby the massive tree, a female dragon with the most elegant of scales, they lift their voices in a song filled with tragic loss and yearning for deliverance. As the sunlight bears down on them, they finish their chanting as a shadow crosses over their faces. A young woman with red hair looks up, and her eyes go wide as a terrible cry echoes, turning all eyes skyward. An enormous shadow covers the crowd as a large male dragon, scales as crimson as blood comes out of the sun, beating its huge wings to slow its descent. Its crimson, backlit by the sun, seemed to glow from within. The people cry out in alarm and scatter as the dreaded beast alights in their midst. Powerful wings beat repeatedly, flinging people up off their feet as they stumble to back away in fright, before the creature plants its feet on the ground, a single arm joining them as the dragon rears back and releases a loud growl before it lowers its body. The woman, dressed as a shaman, gazes upon the dragon in recognition. It has been four centuries since she had seen him, seen his visage, and heard of him. She had feared the worst, hoped for the best, and now she had her answers, Igneil. She whispers the name of the dragon in stunned amazement as the legendary warrior stands before them. She steps forth, coming out of the dark recesses of the tree's shadow and into the light, revealing herself for the first time since she had laid eyes on him. She is gorgeous, easily one of the most beautiful women in the world, but it's not her true identity, not by a long shot. Her true form lies feet away, still, near lifeless, and massive. She is a young woman with a voluptuous figure and very long blonde hair with blue eyes. She is a woman with delicate facial features, and her eyebrows are cut very short and round a symbol of nobility. Her hair is usually tied in a loose ponytail, reaching all the way down to her legs that ends in a spiral, with taut bandages to keep it in place. Her attire is a white guy with red string decorating it that resemble the traditional clothing worn by the priestess, with the addition of a short red skirt, mid-calf brown boots, and upper thigh-high white stockings. It was Tsukiyumi, water dragon queen, maid of Igneil, and mother to Ignea. The walks through the crowd as they slowly part before her, her eyes filled with water as she reaches the base of the rock where her mate stands before them patiently waiting, you've returned, you're alive, she whispered as Igneil lowered his head as she placed a hand on his scales to gently caress him, I knew you hadn't forsaken us after all this time beloved. She whispered. I need your help, Tsukiyumi. I know you don't like the idea, but it's time to make our return. Igneil told her in a deep voice. Then we best prepare the ritual if you're to walk among them, to live as one of them. 
she said as she motioned to the dragon to follow, first, we'll heal you, then, we'll begin on your reformation as a human. She said as she motioned for him to follow, come, we have a few hours before we can perform the ritual, if you had come any later, you would have had to wait till the next full moon to go through with this. She informed him as the dragon grabbed the arm and made to follow, prepare the ritual, we transfer his spirit to that of man. She yelled out as people began to flutter about to quickly do as she said. The great seer had spoken. XXX that, night XXX. The moon hung high above them. Igniel stood at the base of the tree, his arm reattached and fully healed with a light scar surrounding his flesh where it was replaced. The crowd of humans who had been preying upon his arrival are down on the ground, waiting for the ceremony to begin. Tsukiyumi stands next to Igniel, patiently as a young man is carried to the front by a larger more fit man. The boy is wrapped in thin vines to cover his modesty as he is in fact naked. The blonde woman directs them to lay boy's body among the roots on the altar rock. Tsukiyumi then touches Igniel's shoulder and he steps back. His form now moving to where he had been told to be so as to perform the ritual. Tsukiyumi speaks softly, the great king may choose to save all that the two of you are she says before her hand indicates the human on the ground, in this body. To live and speak as one body, to breath and fight as mind, to love and cherish as one soul. She explains. Igniel gulps, realizing the enormity of what she's saying. Is that possible? The priest who delivered the boy asked. Tsukiyumi nodded softly, they must pass through the eye of Balerion, and return. But Igniel he is very weak. Igniel lays down and inhales before deeply exhaling, fear not, because this boy shall live. He said with conviction. Drums begin to beat heavily in a deep thrumming boom near Thunderous, hear us please, great king. Tsukiyumi chants in the tongue of dragons, a language only she and Igniel knew as they were the only speakers at the time, her followers raising their arms and placing their hands on each other's shoulders as they chant loudly as they sway in circles. Valyrian, help them. The humans chant out. Take their spirit into you. She calls out loudly, her voice echoing through the air. Valyrian, help them. The humans chant out. And breath them back to us. She called out in deceleration. Valyrian, help them. To let your chosen king walk among us, Tsukiyumi pleaded. Valyrian, help them. As both dragon and man. Tsukiyumi spoke in hope. Valyrian, help them. To live and die as the bridge between both. Tsukiyumi finished her chanting as the blonde woman gasps and stands in a kind of trance amongst the tendrils of the mother tree. The priestesses and the other acolytes dance hypnotically. All the acolytes sway and chant to the rhythm of the drums as fine hair-like threads have emerged from the roots and ground and are gently spreading over Igniel's scales and the boy's skin. Both man and beast can feel their body being fused to the root floor by a thousand connections. The boy is gently connected by the same questing link they entwine with the threads and spread over the bodies of man and dragon. The grotto is dark except for the spectral glow of the willows. The chant continues, hypnotically. Tsukiyumi, on her knees beneath the mother tree, writhes her arms in the trance state. Her eyes are rolled back, showing only white. Moments later she is released from her trance as she gasps and turns while raising a hand, causing the chance to stop. The young man groans as he sits up, a hand moving to his head as he pushes himself to the sitting position, ugh, that was strange. I feel different the team muttered. Igniel, are you alright? Tsukiyumi asked him. I am not Igniel, but neither am I the one who originally inhabited this body. The boy said, turning to reveal draconic eyes that the blonde woman knew but did not recognize, Igniel's true form, to her shock, began to glow as sparks of glistening light filtered into the air, coating the various people in single droplets of magic. Several hundred of them now filtering onto the boy as Igniel's body vanished. W what happened, T this wasn't supposed to happen. Tsukiyumi called out. It's Balerian's decree that the two of us live in breath as one body. I am able to shift between human and dragon, to return as Igniel if need be, but to remain as I am now. He told Tsukiyumi, and me name is no longer Igniel. D then who are you? The blonde asked him. My name is. XXX Magnolia XXX. Natsu stands at the edge of a cliff, looking out over the lake that Phantom had attacked them from. He didn't know why, but there was something in the air, he could not determine what it was, but it was familiar to him all the same. Happy came walking up with a silent worry, Natsu, are you okay, you haven't eaten in days. The exceed said. Yea, I'm fine. The dragon slayer stated. You're starting to worry everyone, you aren't acting like yourself, you haven't even fought with Grey these past few days. Happy said. I'm fine Happy, just not feeling well is all. Natsu explained. Maybe we should have Wendy look at you, just to be safe. Happy offered. I don't know, I think he's just being a brat. A new voice said from their left drawing their attention. Turning the dragon slayer and exceed see a tall and muscular young man of 17 to 19 years old, with very spiky red hair with blonde tips, with some of it being styled into a ponytail in the back. 
he has a singular violet colored eye, while the other one of is covered by a black square shaped eye patch with a white cross on it, while there was a large noticeable vertical scar from a past injury, thus he covers it with the patch. Insists of a leather outer jacket, which he wears over his shoulders, a white collared shirt with blue flame and chain designs, dark colored trousers and boots and a light colored belt. His outer jacket was coated with blue lines, and the buttons on it are in shape of cross-like symbols. He stands at 6 feet 5 1 4 inches. Who are you? Natsu growls. Now now Natsu-kun, is that any way to speak with your father? A beautiful blonde woman asks as she steps out from behind the man. She is dressed in a black dress with a white underdress which shows her cleavage, a black and white choker, and long brown boots with black stockings. Because of her short skirt her panties are often exposed to everyone around her, which is something she will come to regret in the future. Natsu clenches his fist, he is not my dad, my dad is Igneal, the fire dragon king, not whoever this kid is. He retorts. Natsu, th there's some kind of pressure in the air. Happy says nervously. Yay, it's me about to kick this guy's ass. Natsu growled. Natsu please th these guys aren't worth fighting, th they have enough magic power to beat the whole guild on their own. Happy pleaded. I'd listen to your little friend, wouldn't want to cause any problems before we can explain in detail. The blonde said calmly. However, the dual-haired man held a hand up, it's best to let him vent, he's not listening at this point. He told his friend, stand back and don't interfere. Make sure nobody steps in as well. He told her as he looked right and noticed other members of the fairy tale guild came pouring out the back to try and help Natsu out in case it was an attack against their guild and family. Tell me something. Natsu said to the man, just who are you exactly? he questioned. Naruto laughed, I have several names I go by, but for now, you may call me Naruto. The now introduced Naruto stated calmly as he raised a hand and redirected a blow from the salmon-haired teen and launched a kick to his stomach, causing him to slide back. Natsu grunted as he slid back and glared at Naruto, are you ready to surrender? He demanded. Naruto snorted, if this is the best you can do, then it might do you well to try again when you are older. Maybe by then, you could try again, he said before yawning as if he was tired. It was a ploy to rile the young man up, and unfortunately for Natsu, it worked rather well. An aura of flame began to grow out of Natsu's body to embrace his body, before he vanished in a burst of speed and smashed a fist into Naruto's face, only causing him to turn it slightly from the blow. How about that, does that give me your attention now? Natsu demanded. So, this is as fast as you can go. Unfortunately, I have fought faster, Naruto said as he looked at Natsu and stroked his chin calmly. Trust me, we're just getting started, Natsu growled out. And once more he vanished and appeared before his opponent, hands coated in fire. Seeing this Naruto raised a brow and coated his palms in flame and deflected his blows with powerful explosions of flame. When Natsu attempted a kick, the redeed simply batted the limb away and ignored the fire the salmon-haired teen had created. Jumping up he tried to kick him again, only for his forearm to take the blow instead. Careful Natsu, he's not moving from his spot. Marahin called out. Yeah no shit, this guy can take a hit, Natsu complained. HMPH, how impudent of you, Naruto stated as he blocked another hit. The blonde woman Tsukiyumi she called herself side as she pats the silver-haired beauty on her shoulder, we might as well let them finish. There's no chance at stopping this now. Natsu is a hard-headed person and doesn't take kindly to being talked down to. Always has been, always will be, she told the silver-haired beauty. She watched as Natsu tried to kick Naruto with both legs, only for the man to simply brush him off with excruciating ease, as he simply waved his hands into the path his kicks were directed, plus it's also the only kind of communication that'll get through his skull, Tsukiyumi informed her. No, it's not that, Makarov said to the girls. What is it then? Mira asked him. Somehow Natsu has lit a spark in Naruto's fighting spirit, he's eager to see what he can push young Naruto to do in a fight, the elder stated. Natsu growled as a third tail sprouted out and fire began to burn freely across her hands and feet, you bastard, taste my carry high no my, fire dragons. Dance of flame, he declared as he began to spin around. Natsu flipped onto his hands and swiped his feet in a circular arc and raised himself up onto a single hand and spun around when Naruto blocked and deflected one of his blows, causing her to spin in the other direction, causing her kick to hit his shoulder. I am not impressed, I am growing bored here due to your lack of power, Naruto said as flames flickered across his hair. His left eye had turned a startling white to the point one couldn't tell if he was blind or not, his other eye, however, blazed like a thousand suns as it glowed with golden energy, and flames literally began to burn over his patch. Suddenly his power spiked and flames coated his arm only for an explosion of power to erupt from him. What the hell is that? Lucy cried out in shock as Naruto's power skyrocketed. 
You should stand back, Tsukiyumi said as she narrowed her eyes at Naruto. He's starting to get warmed up, she told her fellow blonde as a powerful aura began to surround Naruto. Waves of heat were being expelled around the man so much they could literally feel the heat as it poured from his flesh. If you remain as serious as you are, I find it only proper to begin giving my all as well. Witness the might of real dragon slayer magic, stated Naruto as he raised a fist and it began to glow a bright gold color. Raising his foot, he surrounded it in a similar aura and then slammed it down onto the ground so strongly that it expelled a wave of fire and plasma that struck Natsu so fast he wasn't able to dodge out of the way in time, and Natsu was blasted back from a mere stomp of Naruto's foot. W what is this power? Natsu thought to himself in shock. Lucy and the others felt their eyes widen in shock, what kind of ability is that? She exclaimed. Ouch, that had to hurt, Grey winced. So much power, Gajiel said with wide eyes. There's just so much magic power, Happy said, gulping at Naruto's power. He's really amazing, Kana stated. Natsu righted himself in the air and landed in a crouch and allowed more fire to encompass his body as his inner fire blazed with an intense fury. A burst later and he broke the ground as he rushed at Naruto to try and pummel him into the ground. However, what Natsu didn't expect was for Naruto to simply point his palm at Natsu and unleash yet another powerful shockwave that knocked the salmon-haired teen back even further back, causing him to cry out in shock. When Natsu landed, he dug his hands into the ground to force himself to a stop. He looked up at Naruto in awe, the sheer heat alone coming off of him feels as if it could crush me, he said to himself. Tsukiyumi, seeing the astonished looks explained, he's turned himself into what would amount to a human furnace. I can see how he gathers his energy and stores it internally and gradually uses his spiritual energy to stoke the internal fire so that each muscle of his body burns with tremendous raw power as she gazed at Naruto with a calm look on her face. At this point, he'd be nothing but a walking mass of pure thermal energy. It's easy to see him as a flame given human form, Urza stated in awe of Naruto's power. If this is the best you can offer me, then you might as well give in. At this point, you couldn't even try to force me to tell you of Igneal's current location, Naruto stated as flames literally burned like a pillar around him, knowledge can be dangerous and often deadly to the weak, he stated firmly, if you want answers, then prove to me that you are strong enough to hear them. Show me your resolve, convince me that you have the power to go and search for your father on your own without help, he demanded the teen. Why won't you just tell me where my dad is? It would be so simple for you to just tell me and then just be on our way. Natsu stated. What's the matter? Are you afraid of how weak you are? At the rate you are going, you won't even come close to impressing your old man as you are now you know. Naruto demanded. Shut up you lying Natsu stopped there and grit his teeth, faker. He yelled out. Gray snickered, I thought he was about to call him a naughty word, he whispered to Gajil who snickered at the teen statement. All right, you want my full power, I'll give it to you, Natsu growled, I'll show you that I am ready to find my dad and we will be going after him when I find out where he is, Natsu stated confidently. You have grown strong, I almost don't wish to believe it, Naruto whispered to himself. Natsu growled as his magic surged, I'm gonna make you talk, even if it kills me. He roared out as he burst forth, only to make contact with another shockwave that tore the ground apart. Naruto growled as his aura began to grow even more, his power strengthening each passing second, is that all the resolve that you have? He demanded, it's almost like the dying flame of a candle, he sneered at Natsu. If the others could have looked at Naruto, they would have seen a hulking figure that resembled a god more than man, his flesh literally burned as hot as the sun, his hair waved around like a living fire had been born, it even flickered like it was lit aflame. Natsu growled as fire blossomed around his body, don't take me so lightly, or you'll be in for a rude awakening. He yelled at him as he appeared before Naruto, only to be smashed by another shockwave, courtesy of the redeed releasing it from the palm of his hand to hit Natsu with it. However, shockingly enough, Natsu wasn't sent flying back as he dug tendrils of flame into the ground. With a roar, he began to push back against the blast before it shattered against Natsu's face cloak, allowing him to burst forth at Naruto. As he reached Naruto, the teen lashed a foot out to try and hit him, only for Naruto to smash his forearm against Natsu's foot to create a powerful explosion from the clash of energy which caused smoke to fill the air. Naruto blocked Natsu's foot as he tried to kick him and then lodged a knee into the teen's gut, forcing Natsu to bend over, and then Naruto performed a leap up into the air and performed a roundhouse kick that sent Natsu sprawling away from him, not bad, but you could have broken through on the first blast I sent at you had you been less blinded by anger son. You are much weaker than should currently be, he told Natsu. And with that Naruto powered down, this fight is over, there is no winner, nor a loser, he stated as he walked away only to stop, however, I will be the first to admit that those sputtering flames you once had are now an unquenchable inferno. 
and then he placed his hand on Inetsu and surged a large amount of magical energy into the teen as he passed out and picked him up and placed him on his shoulder, I need to finish your training, come Tsukiyumi, we're leaving. He said as the blonde walked over and embraced her love. Wait, who are you? Altier asked them. You should already know who I am, time mage. Naruto grinned as the humans gasped as swirls of flame sprouted around him and Tsukiyumi and an extension, Natsu, until we meet again humans. Fear not he'll be back in a couple months. And they vanished in a wave of flame. What if Naruto saves fairy tale from Acnologia, and thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys next video.